Welcome to the Roadshow Podcast. Crafter. How you going? Good, bro. How are you? I'm good. What's been happening, man? Um, one summer where I didn't actually go away anyway for once, so I got to spend it back here. What's it like now having a child and and doing all the the summery things like i remember when like when we were kids well obviously we didn't grow up together but when i was a kid i would do like these crazy fucking things all all throughout summer just get lit the whole fucking weekend mm. and now you're you're kind of grown up i've got a baby on the way yep which is fucking wild this yeah. is my first <laughs> and now you've got a daughter and before you came here you had she was getting her nails done what what what, what is this life that you are living now yeah brother? well she has school on Wednesday. She starts high school and her nails Whoa. nails are all broken and stuff. <laughs> so she's gone from being this like, oh, just my adventure buddy, you mm. know, to now caring more about being a little girl, which mm. she is. Of course. She's 11. She's going to be 12 soon. So oh, her nails didn't look great. And I figured she needed to get nice ones for school. <laughs> girl so you up. need... Yeah, you need to get the new uniform, the shoes, the nails, the Damn. all the books. It all, it's all as they get bigger. It all goes hand in hand. Yeah, right. I think oh, that's. I'm scared, bro, mm. of all of that shit. Yeah. Were, I, were you scared when you were young? I like s- younger. I say when because it was such a like. I'd started dating a, a female here, mm. um, and uh, she. We didn't know each other a whole like a lot, but we had this massive plan that we're going to move to the Gold Coast, do all, have this life up there, go to the beach and everything. Week before she leaves, she's unwell. Oh no, she's pregnant. Oh no. So our life on the Gold Coast that we thought at the time was going to be like beach every day was more so morning sickness. And, <laughs> and yeah, so we we lasted there a few months, and then I was I was scared, but. I just turned thirty at the time, right? So it was, yeah. But as as it's gone on, it's like it's it's crazy to adapt to a very good co-parenting relationship. Mm. Um, and then also, she has her time with me, which is one style of parenting, I think. And then a time with her mother, who's probably a bit more strict and stuff. And yeah, um, you're the a, cool dad. Well, I try and be the cool dad, yeah. and then when I try and tell her off, she like turns on me like, <laughs> "Fuck off, man!" Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> like we're battling battling yesterday over the small i didn't get a sent me a text didn't get a pringles that she wanted oh no so she was off me for about two hours and i'm like you gotta get over this shit come on <laughs> like and then i'll try and ask her like what's going on and she'll still be off me i'm like oh i'm gonna leave you be for a bit yeah now, it's one of those things now where you you need your space as well We're like mm. if you both get pissed off at each other walk away for a bit and then come back it's she's like she's a little human man. Yeah, yeah yeah and she's a very hormonal little girl right. and she's very and i've got to also remember i'm arguing with a form like a form of myself yeah who's pretty <laughs> stubborn up, i'm like dude. fuck i'm like i know i'm fucking stubborn and i'm like oh this little girl is me in a little form yeah. and i'm like i've just got to accept defeat here yeah walk yeah. away so uh, yeah i like to think that um yeah, she's ready to go into high school. Mm. I, I, I wanted to have her, her mental toughness. Mm. Need that. You need you need a strong little female. Out yeah, there. but I think like if you have got you as your dad, <laughs> oh, I fucking hope so. <laughs> you know, like, I like, like, oh shit! Look who's been dropped off at school. Oh, I, and they're, first they're that, listening to her dad's music. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Imagine that. Like, it's funny because when they say certain things, they're like the, her friends and stuff. Yeah, they're like, oh, I showed my dad or my family your band or something. I'm just like, oh. This is kind of so embarrassing yeah, that yeah, I was yeah. like screaming in a metal band, <laughs> and like at times we had very, very questionable haircuts. Yeah, yeah, so, the best haircuts. For the oh time, well, the, the era was. I like look at stuff now, and like people will say about certain things. I was like, we were at the start of doing those mm-hmm. shocking haircuts, yeah. and I remember Prom Queen did a interview once for the Adelaide paper, right? Because there was some like, I think it was like a hair business festival like and we went and got these haircuts from fucking one of our friends who was like a real well-known hair designer hair stylist or whatever at yeah. the time 
and we looked ridiculous. Like we're like black at the back, blonde at the front, yeah, or yeah, yeah. vice versa. And we literally looked like a metalcore boy band. <laughs> and I was like, I've been, I actually have been trying to find okay, it. Super I, yeah, I literally want these like things to go, like here put this on the internet have a laugh at how ridiculous we looked yeah, like, yeah. because th- that was a bit of an era and then it was like i think we went from that to pretty much all black that was the next yeah phase. that's that's the transition when you get heavier is just go yeah. like look colorful look at us yeah. and then just like here's our real soul oh yeah and then i don't think i've really gone past the black phase Me like neither. i've literally this w- is kind of the bluest oh, that I've got. <laughs> if you go from my cupboard it's just all black t-shirts i, I know i know for me i can't wear a white t-shirt i eat like yeah, I'm. I struggle. Yeah, I like tomatoes, and that on a white shirt isn't going to go well. So and understandable. I, yeah, so I'm pretty much everything's black, including like with the shop shirts. I don't print any other color than black. Black, yeah. And well, every now and again with a band, if we go away and stuff, I'll try and branch out and maybe do a white option. But that's the least. But then you get sweaty on stage, and it's like a fucking white t- white t shirt competition. Oh yeah. Oh, and that's the thing. I think when we always, when if like confession goes and plays, I like the aesthetic of everyone looking in the same kind of look. And that's, you look at everyone. Oh, I was going to tell you actually, um, I was listening to Cancer um, in Woking in, mm. in England, right? Yeah. And um, my headphones, I thought I had my headphones like on like this, mm. but they weren't connected to my phone. I was in the gym, yeah. right? And, um, send a meat truck was playing yeah. like loud as fuck on my phone i was like why isn't it loud and there's a there was a dude next to me he's like what the fuck is that mate <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah this is confession bro he's like oh shit this is crazy <laughs> he's like where are you guys from and i'm like oh, it's not my band motherfucker <laughs> i'm not walking around like have a listen to my band but it's like when you when you years ago we'd be in like the ghettos of america playing like because the venues in on tour were never in the nicest places mm. and you'd have like full gangster looking dudes coming up going want to buy my demo like what? on a cd like, like that was, really happened yeah and especially like if you walk down hollywood hollywood boulevard back in the day that would be the same there'd always Whoa. be this artist trying to sell their cd and stuff like that's i, th- I feel like now what would you do would you have a qr code they have yeah. those tappy cards, right? Where you tap it on your phone, it brings up the... Oh, it just gives it to you. It just gives it to you straight away, the oh. Spotify, yeah. Well, they... You could walk around, like, and just tap people's wallets. Oh. You know, and uh, pockets, sorry, when you're walking around a festival, just... Doo, 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 doo. Well, everyone, everyone... Remember when everyone ended up with that U2 album? It was on everyone's yeah, fucking phones. On Apple, right? Yeah. They did a deal with them. Yeah, and it's like everyone in the world got that fucking thing on, on the new iPhone It was time. a trash record, yeah. too. I know, and you know what happened? It was like, I think they thought it was going to make them bigger, but everyone's like, no, nah, they're cunts. <laughs> yeah, like, I can't pretentious del- fucks. I can't delete this. <laughs> yeah. Like, you fuckwits. Yeah, yeah. And like, I'd get in the car, put it in, and it would fucking come on. I'd be like... <laughs> I fucking hate these cunts. <laughs> like, it's like, fuck. Fuck you, boy. Yeah, yeah, like, fucking, you've literally forced your fucking shit down my throat. Yeah. And it's like, it's garbage. Yeah. And like, I, I, you two had good songs in their day. And I watch, when I watched the, um, uh, fuck, the Defiant ones, mm, Doco. Yeah. And then when, like, um, Jimmy Iovine was with them and mm-hmm. stuff like that, I was like, Fuck these cunts. They put their fucking thing on my phone. They literally like, did yeah, it. Like, yeah, that was a purpose-driven yeah. thing. Yeah. I just hated it. So, but that's... I feel like that's music nowadays. It's like... It is, There's man. some kind of... It's... It, it's it's all... It's marketable. Yeah. Like, if you are marketable, you will sell. Mm. Which is... It makes sense on a business standpoint, but is that what art is determined as these days? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, art used to be like a subjective thing that, you know, like some people would hate metal mm-hmm. other people would love metal yeah. it was like a, a good thing and now like, it kind of just seems like can we sell you yeah yeah and i think there 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 was a time in in music where they were looking for a look mm. and we were like in this weird transition period where pop punk was about a look they all looked the same they all sounded the same and there was a very big pop punk music scene that was developed like developed in the early 2000s or whatnot and then we came along which were like a certain style but we weren't probably i don't know if we 
kind of like we obviously had a look and, and stuff like that but we were coming out with a bunch of bands who had absolutely no look mm -hmm. and absolutely like no label support no bullshit like we were just coming doing our things and we we're like relentlessly touring yeah but then there was all these bands which i felt like major labels at the time were looking for the next big thing and i think that's the same now it's like there was Nowadays, it's like, okay, well, what's your fucking jingle for TikTok? Or what's your fucking 30... 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, your 30 fame. seconds. Yeah. Like, it's going to... And you look at um, just, like, the way bands deliver stuff now. Like, you'll get three or four singles, and sometimes bands won't even be announcing that they've got a big album coming. Yeah. Like, Bring Me can just drop... Like, Bring Me the Horizon can drop whatever they want. Yeah. Architects can drop whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Even Parkway could. Like, you're nearly better off being on the rap method where you just drop a single and yeah. that's your fucking... Because, like, back in the day, or well, not even back in the day, but over the years, like Eminem or Snoop or whatever, they drop a song for a movie or mm -hmm. they just drop a song for the sake of it. Yeah. Blow up, be ginormous... And the the money they'd be making off the YouTubes and the Spotify and whatever, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's it was massive. Huge back yeah, then, at least. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, now it's like, I feel like bands are nearly, they're not scared to release an EP anymore. Mm. They're not scared to just drop a single, which is probably better. Yeah. Like, I, I like, I don't know if, well, I'm fucking old, so I don't know if I can sit down and stomach a whole album and be like, take it in like I would have, 10, 15 years really ago. really depends on how many fucking mushrooms you take. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, you, if you're sitting there, you know. <laughs> well, I, how deep well, do you feel this chair? Yeah, the thing is, is <laughs> I stopped taking drugs when I was so young. Oh, right. That the biggest, probably a good move. The, yeah, well, <laughs> it's possibly. But the problem is, is as I've gotten older, I... I just relate less to a lot of music. Like mm. I relate to it if they're my mates. Yeah. So like I, I love listening to like Bring the Horizon because I've known them for so long. Um, we've done tours together. Uh, is Ollie Sykes still in it? Yeah. He is. Yeah, he's never gonna. He I is, don't think he, he'll ever drop he, out. He is all. it. He is it. He, he, you reckon? He's it. He's the glue. He's the. He's. Fuck, I'm just trying to put him on a on a perspective of, like people that are like surpass their fucking band mm -hmm. like Gwen Stefani surpasses her band a sting in the police yeah yeah like yeah. Ollie Sykes surpasses Bring Me The Horizon mm -hmm. like he's got the big clothing brand he's True. this fucking big person on in the internet he's friends with like anyone mm -hmm. and like it's even to the point where it, like Linkin Park were getting him up to sing songs you know like yeah. stuff like that so yeah. he's they're not getting the drummer up. Like. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So, I think with like them, I, I can li listen and like Amity, I can listen to Parkway. Like I've got these friendships which have been formed like half a lifetime ago, mm. and now it's like I just like hearing these bands still doing stuff because yeah. I, I don't do stuff. I go to work. I've got all my shit going on. I'm busy with all that, and I just can really appreciate that people have not only surpassed like uh especially for the australian bands like amity parkway now is polaris alpha wolf they north are. lane they are all these bands they fucking surpassed every fucking shit triple j fucking thing on the radio mm -hmm. like i tell you what there's not many too many triple j bands or big rock bands or big pop bands leaving this country and playing the fucking world no shit but the metal bands are talk about north lane bro fucking i saw posters in london yeah. of north lane i was like same guys yeah, like what yeah, the fuck yeah. like, holy shit and that's the thing you'll be in being like london or europe and stuff and you'll see so much of it because those bands are just so fucking big in other countries it's wild yeah it's actually wild because you think about it like the actually let me digress quickly the craziest thing about the the spread and the openness now of like the internet plus music equals communication between everyone of different styles of music slaughter to prevail yeah the russian band yeah john Ormus. holy fucking yeah. shit dude yeah i have no idea I, not one single word of yeah. what he is saying but it is the heaviest mo most brutal fucking shit i've ever heard in my ever. life like what the fuck <laughs> is that well he i feel like he was one of those dudes on youtube that was just uploading videos of him 
being the heaviest vocalist ever. Yeah. Fucking wrestling bears and doing all <laughs> weird. Really yeah, walk, yeah, walking around with machine guns. Like, it was kind of like, <laughs> this is so fucking Russian. Yeah. That it's like, <laughs> like it, it's like, is this, a, is this serious or is this a fucking me? Yeah. And then he... His vocals, like and he was doing pop songs and doing everything. Then the band drops, just and it's just the low. biggest fucking thing. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that Viking song where he where he'll tell the audience to shut the fuck up. Oh yeah, and then he screams yeah. without a microphone yeah. on stage. Yeah, that's how much a projection do you have of your false chords I don't to know. be able to do that, bro? Mm, His neck that. is like this. Yeah, he's like Corey Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I, and I think like there because. Because they are Russian and they've kind of done a bit of a fuck you to Russia. They've left. They've gone to the States. Yeah, He's yeah. pretty open, out, outspoken. Yeah. And I think they've they've just... The fact his vocals are that heavy, that's why they're as mm. big as they are. He does that gator, that gator oh, growl, yeah. where it's like a roll of the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> can, you, can you try it? You <laughs> reckon? No. I don't even think I could go that low to be able to do that in the first one. Because I used to scream yeah. in a band, yeah. right? But I like that low, bro, like where it's like... <laughs> like yeah it's <laughs> yeah no that's not that's a no from me but yeah i seen him like doing photos with gators and <laughs> yeah. i think they live in florida yeah, which makes sense what the yeah. fuck um before i digress my point was you know how like we used to look at um us like at us bands is like oh that's the mm. the prime land of yeah. where it's coming from i think now all these other countries and even smaller countries larger countries they can now look at any other country and mm. go that's the prime land for yeah. that yeah that style or like because who outside of australia in the 2000s was doing like metalcore no no one literally like i feel like there was a a thing of in the late 90s to early 2000s like poison the well and converge and all those bands were like kind of doing their own style of heavy metal and hardcore influence and then there was this real draw towards european like at the gates carcass all those style right. bands as well and then people just kind of were like okay well we fucking like hate breed and we like fucking at the gates. Mm. So we're going to merge these shit together and have fast parts with breakdowns. Yeah. And literally there was like Unearth and As I Dying and all those bands were fucking doing it, bleeding through. All these bands are kind of like... Still quite progressive yeah, though, right? Yeah. And then Parkway and Prom Queen were like, okay, like we're going to do this too. Yeah. Like it was kind of like we were really... Like on, for Prom Queen, we were really influenced by that Poison the Well um, stuff, but we're also influenced by like European, like Soil Work in Flames, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we were trying to find where we were and what we wanted to sound like. So we started to like add more breakdowns and heavy stuff so people go psycho and jump around. Yeah. And then Parkway obviously appeared in my life and. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time and fucking they blew my mind. And then it was like, okay, well, we're putting ourselves in the mix for all of this. Mm -hmm. Not only did they put themselves in the mix, they fucking outlasted everyone. Yeah. Like there's bands that are, there's bands that are in that same style and whatever that we existed before that still exist, but Parkway are at the fucking top of it. Like mm -hmm. there's, I like to think there's probably three bands that are the biggest fucking bands in, in metalcore and it's Parkway, um, Architects, um, Brim of the Horizon. They're, I think they're the three biggest as yeah, far as agree with that. you're touring the world, whatever. And yeah. then like, there's obviously stuff that's, Parkway and Bring Me and Architects are nearly putting themselves on a fucking Slipknot. They're, they're, they're like making the statement that they're the fucking next Slipknot, Slayer, fucking like, Maybe like no one's going to be as big as fucking Metallica, but these are these Pantera state, back in Pantera the day. Pantera back in yeah, the day. Like yeah. there's these bands now that like come from fucking bad haircuts and fucking <laughs> like a metalcore, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. to now being like pretty stadium rock, mm. stadium metal, like whatever you want to fucking call it. Like Parkway's progressed, Architects have progressed, Brim the Horizons progressed. They're in these fucking. They've got their own little pocket. And all three of them are just ginormous. And that's what I like the most. I look at it and go, fuck, it's good to see your mates still killing it. Even though, 
you might not sp- I might not speak to everyone all the fucking time but I know like if I'm somewhere like when I was in the UK like this time last year I'm not UK in the U- in Europe this time last year we're in Switzerland Germany was a few hours away I mm. messaged Sam from the architects I'm like we're coming to the show I'll see you tomorrow oh, I like see. and just drove there and fucking went and watched the show because <laughs> I hadn't seen I hadn't been back to Europe for fucking nearly 10 years Fuck. Uh, since touring and stuff and in that space of 10 years my life's like completely changed so mm-hmm. I've gone from being that kind of person that's always on tour fuck I had shit going on all the time to like I pretty much made the decision when Kennedy was about to start school that I was done like that was going to be it I need to focus on being a father mm-hmm. and then now it's like she's nearly in high school and half the time she doesn't want to hang out with me. So it's like, <laughs> like fuck, maybe I, need, time, maybe I need a fucking band again. <laughs> like, just so just uh, so I'm not fucking like sitting at home hoping my daughter's going to want to come hang out and go do something. <laughs> Message her, can we go to the beach? She'd be like, no, nah, I'm hanging with my friends. I'm like, cool. Be like, do, you, do your friends want to start a band? <laughs> yeah, like, does, any, does anyone need a band? Do any of their dads want to start a band? What are they... What are their dads up to? It's funny because one of the one of the girls' dads um, was in getting tattooed at one of the shops, right? right. And he's like, "You kind of getting ignored nowadays." And I was like, "Yeah, bro. Like we're fucking, yeah. we're, we're in the back same. burner. Yeah, we're on the we're we're just a passenger now. Mm. We just gotta let's hope the guidance and the parenting and the cool shit we've done in the past is enough for them to maybe yeah. in a few years they think we're cool again. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, currently yeah. we're not. Yeah. So, but that's 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 part of life. It's a journey. It's when when you're on fire, it's really hard to ignore the fire, and yeah. that's what I think puberty is for oh, people. Yeah, you know, it's it's like uh, you don't know why it's happening, yeah. but it's happening. Yeah, you know? and yeah. and for her, it's like everything happened all in the last like year mm. as becoming a a, a, a a woman. You know, she's about to go to high school. They've gone from like, and I, I think going to high school at eleven, psycho. Like it's. Because it's year... Wait, what, at 11? Yeah, so it's year seven is high school now. So they swapped it from... Because it used to be year, year eight was yeah. the start of high school. Now it's year seven. What the... I didn't know that. Yeah, so I don't know if it's because kids have progressed faster or or they've... Shit. Yeah, so they, they send them a year, a year earlier than what I know I went, went as. Because I went in year eight. I was about th- nearly 13. I was nearly 13 as yeah. well. Yeah, year eight. Yeah, so... Damn, dude. So, like, all those brawls and shit you used to see at high school are mm. now being witnessed by 11 year olds. Yeah, so she'll be 12 in March. Whoa. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping, because I was, like, asking, I always ask, like, questions about, like, stuff like that, like, in, about bullying and stuff like mm-hmm. that, because I want to make sure. And I always try and say to her, like, if any of your friends are being bullies, make sure you pull them up. Like, yeah. Make sure they're not, like I said, like about kids that maybe don't have a lot of friends. And I was saying about um, this on another podcast the other week. It's just like she, she's got a good, good, um, obviously good parents and a good life and we've got to travel and all these other things. But like when I was a kid, there were kids that didn't have that. And I always like, I always say to Kennedy, I'm like, I'm going to put more stuff in your lunchbox. And if anyone wants any of it, you know, like I'd rather, like I don't know, I don't know what every, I don't ask what everyone's family situations are like or whatnot, but I'm like, if one of your friends doesn't have enough food in their lunchbox, like always take more. Mm-hmm. Like it's, I'd, yeah, I, I don't want to, I, I hate when anyone goes without, you know. That's fucked. Yeah. So, and I always say to her, I'm like, if, if, if there is that kind of thing going on, bullying and so forth, I'm like, be, I said, you're a good kid. You're a good friend. You're yeah. a good, good little person. Mm-hmm. I said, be a good person to everyone because yeah. when I was a kid, I probably wasn't. I was a bit of a fucking asshole. Mm-hmm. Like in my my case, the person I was probably or one of the people I was probably the biggest asshole to ended up being in prom queen. So me and Jonah were like fucking battling as kids, and then I remember someone maybe tried to beat him up or something and I just got fucking off it. And I wasn't even really that good of friends with him at the time, but he was friends with my friends. And then 
we ended up, I think we're in a class where, because I think we were be, all being shits and they were like, put them in one, you're a fucking little sh- fucking <laughs> C-U-N-T <laughs> class. And I remember he just turned around and he goes, do you want to play in a band? I was like, sure. <laughs> like, and that's literally, I'd been playing bass in a few bands at the time, but I remember being a fucking dick and I was in a cool group, you know, but yeah. then there was a cooler group above us of that were fucking a few years older. And what was funny is as we got older and our band started doing well, I was seeing all these people at shows mm. and they were now trying to like be fucking mates with us. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, how the tables have turned, haven't they, fellas? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we weren't fucking cool three or four years ago and now we're in a band that is doing some stuff yeah. at the time. But yeah, it's it's crazy that like I, yeah, I just, when I was a kid to see nowadays and and as life's part part like as time's gone on because we were given similar like the same towns and and same schools and and so forth and the progression of what me and my friends turned out to be like to maybe some kids across town whose parents weren't as um supportive or his parent the parents were on drugs or Mm -hmm. alcoholics or so forth like i definitely think that growing up and going to the football club and going to surf life saving and doing the small country town kinds of things it just happens helped me become who i am and help my friends on a real good path yes like most of my close friends are all very successful um and, and we grew up with the same same town and it's the same opportunity as far as school goes but maybe like some of our parents weren't doing as well as others um, yeah, some parents weren't in each other's lives as, as much as others and so forth, but most of us turned out pretty fucking good. It's just a shame that some kids get the f- fucking, I don't know how, like... Life, the short end of the Yeah, state, life's yeah. a fucking hard thing, and it's like, if you get a fucking bunch of shit fucking parents, it could send you on a shit fucking ride, and things may never change, and that's mm. a real hard thing to look at. So I like to think that I've given my child a very good opportunity as far as the travel... The support I had her, like we pretty much had fifty-fifty the majority of time. If if my ex needed me to have her more or vice versa, I'd be like, hey, I'm doing a fit out for a shop, can't really have her there every day. Like, can you do this? Can you have her this time? And then if she's like, oh, I'm gonna go away for a few days or whatever, I'm like, yes, wait, it's easy. It's easy to have that kind of thing. And like, trust me, every every co-parenting situation can have its have its ups and downs too. Like we may not agree on fucking everything and we may fucking blow up at each other via text sometimes. But then the the whole end of the fucking thing is, well, what's best for our child and so forth. Like I, I have my battles when it comes to like the back chat and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so does she. Mm-hmm. Like she maybe it, she's worse with her mother. I'm not going to ask that. But we all we both have our battles. We both have our things we need to learn, improve and so forth. And it's all part of the parenting process no one wrote a book that's the idiot's guide to parenting no i'm just the idiot trying to fucking sort it out and be as good a father as i can Mm. and i've got no fucking idea Mm. like my my daughter like all of a sudden i needed to go fucking bra shopping like i'm in a bra shop or in bonds like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing Mm. and the girl on the counter is like laughing thinking it's great and i'm like just what do you think like you help help me the fuck out here this is the child yeah this is her sort there i'm gonna wait outside yeah here's the cash i'll sort this shit out after but i've got no fucking idea and that's that's if you've ever gone lingerie shopping for a woman dude that's the hardest thing in the world oh no especially not, like if you're trying to surprise her with a gift and oh you're like, yeah like yeah. that much yeah like how, yeah. how do i how do i yeah. tell you how big yeah. your titties are? and yeah and you walk in and you're like fucking you just look like a creep <laughs> yeah you're yeah. just like looking walk around with a black bag yeah, like <laughs> looking around like like and people are like what the fuck is this weirdo doing it's like fuck. Got a cap down yeah. Low. <laughs> yeah and it's like fucking just one of those things where it's like a I felt like the the bra shopping or fucking yeah, just everything when it came to having a girl was just like I always needed her with me. Mm. I'm like, 
Kiki, I've got no idea. Can you help me? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm in well, the same boat as you. What are you here for? Like, help me out. I got the same dirt yeah. under my fingernails yeah, yeah. that you do. Yeah, it's yeah, literally yeah. just. But that, that's it's what's so cool about parenting. I just fucking love it. They it's say just, it's a constant learning yeah. experience. Yeah. Right. And like, I, I I read this thing once and it said your your child is pure love until it has an opinion. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. It's a fucking strong opinion. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't yeah. don't fuck up and not get the salt and vinegar <laughs> Pringles because it'll be fucking two hours of playing getting death stared like you've ruined their life. Like fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, th- I think it's fascinating, bro. I do. And I, I and being and allowing your daughter to be the conduit of your kindness to give other people food and mm. stuff like when they don't need it, that's very, very important because it shows her values for the future mm. to show her children yeah. or her friends that she they can then too pass on the kindness. And then you, you look at the 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 past of like the way the way my parents were I, um and obviously how their parents were and so forth, it has a massive effect on how my child is too. Mm. And like it's it's like this thing where I don't remember who my great-grandparents were or great-great-grandparents and so forth, but they had a big fact on all of this to where I am to then how now my child is too. Mm-hmm. So it's like the things that I can do and show just Kennedy the love and respect and just the thing also to believe in herself and so forth it just has such a everlasting effect on what's next for her whether it be how she treats people at school how she treats people at work how she treats her own children and so forth so it comes all the way back to like my parents were great fucking real supportive um even to like music like if you're a kid and you're fucking 15 and fucking darren next to you at school is like yeah i'm gonna be a fucking carpenter and then fucking the dude over there, is, he's going to be a plumber. Mm. You're 15, and you're like, I'm going to be a band. Yeah. They're like, what the fuck? Like, teachers were like, what the fuck? Like, this isn't real. Mm. You aren't even in the music class. Mm. We were like, fuck the music class. That, Don't we're, not gonna, we're not going to learn in there. <laughs> like, we're not going to actually learn how to read music. That sounds stupid. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read these numbers where a string is <laughs> yeah. and play Don't off a jump. fucking tab. <laughs> And that's how it's done. I'm like, fucking Pennywise, bro, him, here I come. (laughs) So, like, all these fucking things. So, like, I remember getting talked to by, like, career fucking people. Like, you cannot do that. And I'm like, "Mm, I probably can. Mm. And they're like, you're from a small town. You're in South Australia. No one's left here. Like, very little bands have left this state. Like, I remember, like, at the time, there was a band called The Mark of Cain who were, like, the biggest thing. The test eagles were like pretty big in our area. Um, testicles or test eagles, <laughs> but it's, people would say test testicles. Um, but then, like, then there was like, um, fuck, I think Super Jesus were from there. There was a few like fucking bands. Super Jesus, yeah. And then yeah. like Hilltops were obviously fucking big, but that was a hip hop band. Yeah, but Hilltop Hoods wasn't going to resonate anywhere else in the world. No, like it resonates in fucking like. Australia and maybe the UK because mm. of the the Australian population that's in the UK. Yeah. But outside of that, a lot of bands don't resonate. So that's why with us, like it's like mm, odds are stacked against you. And it's like one year we start a band, the next year we tour Australia, the next year we're in America. Mm. And not many bands can say they did that. Parkway Drive can say they did it, mm-hmm. but they Just can. Yeah, yeah, like they can say that because we had bands before us doing it. Mm. We wanted that. Then we did it, and then what happens? Parkway Drive wants what we're doing. Yeah. And then the next fucking band, say Amity Affliction, wants to do what Parkway Drive and Prom Queen are doing. Mm-hmm. So they go and do it. And then it's the <coughs> fucking thing where it starts with like, uh, honestly, I think it like it was a band called Toe to Toe. It was a band called Day of Contempt. There was all these yeah. bands, and they were the first ones doing it. They were the first ones traveling. They were the first ones, like even a band like 28 Days were on the Warp Tour in America. Mm-hmm. So you'd see that and go, fuck, I really want that. Like, all these things. I just want to be able to tour, getting in a fucking van, whatever. It's, I, the idea to a kid is the best fucking life you can ever have. So that's the steamroll effect that's now all these bands that come out of Australia go, well, that none of that's not achievable. Like mm-hmm. for us, it was like fucking, it was a fucking dream. Like mm-hmm. it's like, imagine getting to America. Nowadays, it's like, 
oh, fucking get on bloody TikTok, chuck a song up. You could be fucking touring America. Not a whole song, though. Yeah, not a Because people don't want to see it or hear that shit. That's fucked up, right? Yeah. So then you, nowadays you see the 10 or 20 or whatever Australian band touring the world and you're like, all of this is possible. And it's cool that I'm still friends with a lot of those bands, get the recognition and credits for what we did and how we did it at the time. Mm. But like you could go to the US, have your phone, find a fucking venue because your phone's telling you where to go. We had a fucking book, that, like a folder, and we would print from one venue to the next venue using MapQuest and follow these things and be the directions. like... Yeah, the directions. Yeah. And then swap a page <laughs> when we get to a certain area. And like now I look at it, I'm like, we did it fucking hard. Mm-hmm. We had no money and fucking vans that were falling apart. The amount of times we were all stuck on the side of a freeway and like just in a shit van that was going to blow up. <laughs> yeah, buy steaming it, like yeah, fuck. <laughs> buy another van and blow up. Like all these fucking things. And it's like... I mean, we go there and be like, oh, we better buy another van. And we've nearly, I felt like every tour we're buying a van. Whoa. Finish at the tour, fucking take it to a scrapyard or something. I never, I actually don't know where half of them went because there was <laughs> times where we'd like, I, we like, just give it to somebody. Yeah, we're on the fucking, I remember like we were in South Carolina and we we're stuck there for like multiple days and we had to fucking get a mate. No, it was Virginia Beach. And we had to um, get a mate missus's parents to lend us their four-wheel drive so we could get to up up a uh upstate new york to play like a handful of shows Damn. in like a jeep like thing and we were like four uh two in the front three in the back and then fucking trailer and someone in the fucking pa- um Bro, that's like 600 miles yeah Virginia so, beach to upstate yeah, new york yeah so yeah <laughs> so we fuck? just drove all the way did that did a bunch of shows somehow we played virginia beach like three or four times we just, we were just jumping on anything we could because yeah. we were stuck there yeah, yeah, yeah. and there were just times like that so now i like look at what bands have like I, it was so easy for me to go to the states last time hire a car get fucking um, Airbnbs or hotels and just cruise with Kennedy and drive Mm. all over California, Nevada and everything. Mm. But back then I felt like hiring a car was the hardest fucking thing on the planet. Yeah. Oh, how old are you? Oh, I'm 21 or 22. No. You gotta be 25, motherfucker. Yeah. 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 Yeah, So we, even in Australia, we struggled. So it's like, it's cool that bands have a lot better opportunity nowadays. Do you think it might be shooting themselves in the foot though with all this, like, you you think about what Instagram and TikTok and all these things are. It's kind of trying, well, it is trying to indicate to others that you're already successful, right? Mm. So people always splurge out on a nicer van yeah. or you know they 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 don't get the joy of doing it rough oh yeah because they're trying to virtue signal that they're already successful oh, yeah well it's the fake it till you make it thing right and people but like how how often do you see just in general life people up uploading cars they don't own or mm-hmm. fucking motorbikes they don't own or fucking these hotels and all this shit that's fucking like cool You've, you've gone and stay at some fucking really nice place for one fucking night. I'd rather go fucking sleep in a fucking paddock and admire what's around me than, you know, like I, I think I went through my phase of thinking everything need to be fucking flash and whatever else. And nowadays I'm like way more settled with just like even going to Lowbrook Dam or something and just spending the day down there is better the, for me than fucking go on a state crown or or mm. whatever like as much as i love to gamble um i lo- fucking love what's it. your game of choice blackjack oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. only blackjack um but then they haven't gotten um the the hard road that it's like black and i always go back to parkway no one's going to be fucking sleeping on the side of freeways like they did no one's going to be sleeping in fucking abandoned shipwrecks because they want to like, no one's going to be fucking, um, like, going from where they are in Byron Bay, not having fucking shows planned and just driving and working it out. Mm-hmm. They were fucking getting shows as that whatever they could get on, they were driving across America. Now bands are so much better planned and tours are so much better planned that if you get off the fucking plane in Europe and you're on a tour, there's going to be a bus there. Mm. You're going to be able to get on that fucking bus. We mm. didn't have that fucking luxury. Parkway Drive didn't have that luxury. 
Um, a lot of other bands didn't have that luxury in that time, but nowadays it's a lot easier to plan tours. It's a lot easier to hire, get on big tours or fucking whatnot because there's so much more. Like when we were going to Europe and Parkway was starting out going to Europe, no one was going to shows. The touring cir cir circle for m metalcore and hardcore wasn't what it was now. Like mm -hmm. maybe for a hate breed, you were going to pull fucking big numbers. But they, and for, for us and them, we were playing to fucking no one. Mm. Like, and that's, that's just part of, I feel like that's part of the process of learning. Like, you've got to learn to have a fucking good time and have a sick show when there's fucking five payers. Yeah. Where there's more people in bands than there is fucking payers through the door. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. going, and like, I remember big shows and the, the memorable for me but i remember the fucking bad shows mm -hmm. i remember the fucked ones in the midwest of america it's fucking cold we've all got fucking some kind of covid <laughs> covid <laughs> covid fucking 0.74 <laughs> like way before like i remember going to fucking going to states back in the day and they're like fucking they're um SARS virus. yeah sars <laughs> i remember like fucking, could be sars like shit like that and oh, so i remember those and i can remember going to canberra and there was seven payers once and like Damn. i remember the last time i did a show with prom queen in in canberra and there was 1500 so it's like was that last show uh that, that was a long time ago because mm. I, I haven't been in the band for so fucking long so like i can go now and if confession doesn't show and 500 people show up or fucking fucking 800 people show up i appreciate it so much mm. because i'm living this real normal dad life over here with my businesses and so forth understandable that i can get up on stage and go fuck i really appreciate where i've come from mm. absolutely nothing but those shit shows are just as memorable as the good ones because yeah. you've always got a story about the shit show it's like oh this fucking broke or this happened or it was fucking cold or i don't know why you remember these fuck like i remember we were playing somewhere <laughs> one night and it was it was in california and i look over and kev's guitar is just broken and all this shit i remember like these things or like another time we we're in adelaide and i look over and he's fucking pissing blood out of his head <laughs> and i'm like we're 30 seconds into a set and how's this fucking cunt already hurt himself He's like bleeding and I, I'm, I've got a photo somewhere. He's got a big gash across his head. Somehow he's thrown his guitar in there. He's hit himself in the face, oh. cut himself open and just continues to play. And it's like, yeah, but it's it's those those cool memories that fucking nowadays you're like, fuck, when you go away and you, nowadays if I go play with Confession, it's like go to a hotel. Yeah. Fucking go for nice it's food. A little sweeter. Yeah, yeah, it's we're not eating meagering. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But that's How the, good's meagering? Oh, I fucking love it. Okay. And I put, I said this the other day <laughs> I which bought is a bag yesterday. <laughs> controversial. I mix it, put it all together and then put tomato sauce in it and yeah. What? Yeah, one, one of my mates is like fucking was so <laughs> off me. He was like, "Are you fucking kidding?" He's like, "You and tomato sauce." And then, <coughs> I, then when I said about crump Dude, crumpets, you don't do that. A heap of butter on crumpets, tomato sauce. Crumpets? Yeah, I'm just fucking up everyone's... What? Yeah, like, fuck the Vegemite off, tomato sauce, because it fills with the tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked. Fuck. Yeah. I kind of want to try, like, a crumpet, like, fucking um, hot dog now. Mm. You know, with tomato sauce. Fuck, a crumpet burger would be all right. Why haven't they done that? Surely some cunts done it. There'd Surely. be there'd be some shit burger restaurant with, yeah, with a yeah, crumpet yeah, burger. Yeah, yeah, it's got cat yeah. meat patty or oh, something. Oh, I'd be yeah. fucked. <laughs> like I'm, I'm very selective on burgers. I yeah. I don't mind a burger from a couple of places, mm. but you can get some fucking bad burgers out. Oh, there. dude, have you ever heard of Honest Burger? <laughs> no, Honest Burger, you can't get it here. I want to try and let get a franchise over mm. here or something because it would go fucking nuts we had it in london twice mm. and it was the same every time it, the it's a blue cheese burger right yeah. you like blue cheese not really okay. i don't really like well, you don't have to have that fucking yeah. on there right but it comes out like the the patty is i think it's a half pound yeah and it's pink in the middle and it's oh. beautiful right yeah. it comes out with caramelized onions and fucking everything bro it was the best burger i've ever had in my fucking life right Ooh. And um, this is the first night we were in London. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, 
is all the food as good as this? And we went to another burger joint and it was fucking dog shit. Oh, 100%. That's fuck. I feel like that with most UK foods. Yeah. You can find these gems and you eat at some place. You're like, this place sucks. You think you're going to get the same mm. thing. Like, yeah. it literally was named the same yeah. thing at this other place. I was like, is this like a fucking ripoff of it? Yeah. It must be better. And mm. it wasn't. It yeah. was fucking horrible. Um, yeah. yeah. That's fucked up. Tomato sauce on fucking crumpets, bro. Yeah, well. <laughs> I just like tomato sauce And I said this to him We started about white shirts There's a reason why I can't wear white shirts if You're, you're, you're crum- fucking up you're tomato put, sauce all the time You're putting crumpets and tomato sauce together No one are getting fucking food no in shit, your shirt like putting water in yeah. a colander It's yeah. definitely coming through yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you What was it like the first time that you played with um, Prom Queen? Um, like like on stage? I remember like And that that's one of those things where I remember the first show Yeah, Like I remember they were a band and then I somehow got in the band and then we played this place. I think it, it wasn't the Gaelic club. I think it was like the Macedonian hall or something. And there was a Melbourne band and then a band called the Kill Choir Project at the time. And Prom Queen had two singers, Jonah and JJ were in it. Um, I can't remember who played guitar at that point. Um, and then I just remember because there was good bands on it, it was a big show right off the bat. So I think for us, we kind of got like, there was a few, I think there was, yeah, well, I think we got spoon fed a lot of good shows to begin with right. because we were this fucking new band. We'd all been in other bands before. Yeah, yeah. We were mates with fucking everyone. So we did a bunch of stuff in Adelaide and we were playing with like the punk bands as well and stuff, which was like very, as uh, like, for us to be on Christian pop punk band shows at the time was really? like mind-blowingly different, but <laughs> so the same as far as the scene went. Like yeah. behind the scenes, same fucking kinds of dudes in bands, just different beliefs. Yeah. But then for the crowd was two different fucking worlds. You mm. got these Christian fucking punk loving fucking like going to church on a Sunday and then somewhat degenerate hardcore dudes who fucking pretty much we'd ring out and they'd be trying to fight the crowd so it was like fucking <laughs> chaos from the get-go so then when like i said when we went, went on tour for the first time and there's fucking seven payers in canberra we're like fuck we've got it pretty good back home yeah, yeah. and like because we were going to melbourne went to melbourne so many times and we created this following that when all those first shows happened it was kind of some yeah like i said the spoon fed feeling kind of felt that way because we're given so much Mm -hmm. given so many opportunities but that also came from we were friends with day contempt and we're friends with this bank of the kill choir project embodiment and then we're friends with bands in melbourne and so forth so the building process happened a lot faster for us than it probably does other bands like if you look at nowadays polaris or alpha wolf or so forth these bands have been around for a long fucking time they've been around for nearly 10 years yeah so say the last six years they've broke through Mm -hmm. or five years or alpha war for the last three or four Mm -hmm. but for us and parkway (coughs) drive we broke out and like fucking parkway drive were a big band in six months yeah like they were big by the end of the fucking horizon yeah so like what way earlier than that so like in 2003 don't close your eyes we went out and tour Mm. then don't close your eyes came out Mm -hmm. they were fucking big by then Yeah, yeah so like we did the end of 2004 we did so 2000 the start of 2004 us and evergreen terrace went out us evergreen terrace and parkway then they went out i think with like shadows fall and unearth maybe or shadows fall and as they dying and at the time they were doing like different support stuff here and there and then next minute like i believe at that point don't close your eyes had come out and by the following year was when killing with a smile came out and it was like Mm, they were big like they were they were playing like thousand people venues pretty much and there was a tour where Cry me a fucking river, bitch. Yeah, like, and that's the thing. Like, all those bits were just like, and Prom Queen at the time was obviously the big band, Mm. but the big band sometimes gets eaten by all the other bands out from under them. Yeah, and so like that's kind of how I felt happened. And when I exited Prom Queen and I went on to do other stuff, even the band that I went on to do was kind of like the band that was starting to. When I joined this band, Carpathian, that was the band that was like, fuck, this is going to be the next big band. Mm-hmm. Then I exited that. 
to do something else. Right. So I went through like... What was a, the reasoning? Uh, I wanted... Uh, there was a band called Bury Dead from America and they were like the kind of influential band for all of us. Wow. Parkway, Prom Queen, Bring Me, Carpathian, like and that you band. you took vocals on that? Yeah, so yeah. that band influenced everyone. Whoa. Like when Bring Me brought out, I think it was Suicide Season, yeah. there were riffs off Great that album. that was like the Bury Dead riffs. Yeah. Just that real fucking... Suicide season. That had that song. I got a thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So all the all the like bouncy kind of new metal-y kind of influence shit. It all came from Very Dead, mm -hmm. which then came from fucking new metal. So yeah. it was kind of like this band. I was like, I'd seen them. I'd loved them. I was like, fuck, this is as good as it's gonna get. Ended up doing that, and then while I was doing that, me and Jonah were spending time. Me and Jonah hadn't talked in fucking ages, and then I ended up doing another prom queen tour and then that was it with me with prom queen that was enough one and done again yeah and then i was focusing on my own stuff <coughs> and then as time went on confession lasted when was confession started uh 2008 2008 so that lasted pretty much like up until properly until about 2014 14 yeah yeah 2014 i think maybe the last tour was 2015 um, but I was wrapping it up by the 2000, start of 2015, and then because uh, I I bought cancer off you face to face mm. at the villa. Oh really? Yeah, I've got a photo. <laughs> yeah, Still wow. got the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But yeah, so that and then that that literally was wrapping up because of life. You know, I yeah. needed to end a chapter mm. to start a chapter. Mm -hmm. I couldn't focus on doing a band and doing business. And I had this idea where I was like, I'm going to do a tattoo and barber shop. A mate on the Gold Coast had done it fucking seems rather successful what else can i fucking like what else am i gonna do yeah did it fucking done well mm -hmm. done another one done another one there's fucking shit everywhere beautiful like there's fucking four shops now there's lovely a shitload of artists they're all good people and it's great because i feel like i'm still involved in like the same bare bones like a music like a band is mm -hmm. just a different form of art yeah so like well it is right yeah, yeah it's like illustrations on the skin yeah and like I, I think even like hairstyles are mm. art. yeah 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 sure. i think i think and that's the thing when it comes to art it's like everyone's got their the thing that they fucking love about it mm. and i will always love tattoos i always want it i was getting tattooed and then nowadays i feel like we're i'm dealing with the same kind of dynamic that a band person is mm -hmm you're you're dealing with people that are very uh there's quirks and there's very out there like and herding cats yeah bro. yeah and then they're like <laughs> there's egos there's this it's the same as music yeah it's yeah. and now it's like every shop feels like a different band that's cool every now and again i got to go in and go okay that's you know cool. like what do we need yeah what's going wrong what's mm -hmm. going on like stuff like that and yeah. sometimes you got to shuffle people around yeah. a little bit who got a shit girlfriend yeah <laughs> yeah literally like and, and that's sometimes what it comes down to is you you're you're everyone's dr phil you're everyone's <laughs> boss you're everyone's we'll fucking right friend back. like yeah like <laughs> you've got to fucking give advice like and i'm like people are getting advice off me i've got no idea <laughs> like i've i've got a uh, like a girlfriend now and a good relationship and whatnot but i was getting like relationship advice and i'm like i've got a fucking like me and the baby mama broke up years ago like I'm trying to co-parent. I'm trying to think. I'm like, you fucking. This is the blind leading the blind. Me giving you advice, yeah, but yeah. The, the, like, and but, but sometimes you always like. I find that you always have the best advice that you oh, want to take from yourself. Fuck no. I I think <laughs> I'm, I'm the I'm literally like I said. I'm fucking bogan Doctor Phil giving fucking theories, and then I'm like walk out and I'm like, what the fuck did I just say? Like I feel like I've just given I've just given these people plans to a fucking IKEA furniture in Chinese, and they've got no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Like they're like, what the oh, what? The, like I feel like I walk out and they're like, what the fuck did he just say? Like, but yeah that, and that, the thing is, is I, I like and as I was saying earlier I, I want to be able to talk about my life experience and whatnot it may not be the right thing for everyone but like as far as content goes and stuff online a lot of the podcast stuff that I've always that gets cut up and put into the little sections and so forth mm. is always the stuff that gets the most f feedback most views most whatever and it's cool to be able to put that out there because I have a lot of experience as far as like Life goes, um, death goes, music goes, business goes, so forth. Mm. So like for years I was getting the messages about people having cancer, people surviving cancer, 
family members passing away and so forth and dealing with these things. So that was uh, through the, the year of the um, Long Way Home, uh, Long Way Home and then the life and death CDs was when everyone around me started, like a lot of family members and so forth, started to get cancer oh, and get real sick. And then, so I lost one of my best mates to brain cancer. And then my mum got terminal lung cancer. She's still alive, even Whoa. though. So she just kept smoking darts and drinking Bundy, and she somehow it's preserved. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. She <laughs> she somehow fucking embalmed herself inside <laughs> with fucking <laughs> yeah with ciggies. Oh but, yeah, yeah. But, so she and then my dad ended up with um with throat cancer and passed away very fast, and so forth. Sorry so to hear that, man. yeah, so people had this. Um, I think because of social media, and it's a great thing that people had this thing where they weren't scared to message me about these things mm -hmm. it's a fucking thing that i overcame as far as um by the idea that i hoped for the fucking best and i always prepared for the worst because the chances are cancer's gonna fucking get you because the odds are stacked against you if it's in your throat it's in your lungs it's in your fucking um lymph nodes and so forth the chances are it's fucking bad and my my um Adam, who was like my childhood best friend, it was my first fucking mate. Yeah. He got brain cancer in very uh, in his early thirties. So then, when you when you is he still with us? No, no, he, it happened real fast. Damn, he dude. had Charlie Taylor, the, the best of the best, fucking operating on him, and it just kept kept coming back. And I do I was living here for a long time. Kennedy was just born and stuff. So um, it. it for me, I feel like I'm, I was a world away from everything. Mm. And so, like, I try and call my mum and my sister's going through at the moment because my sister had cancer in her lymph nodes. She's going through some hyperbaric chamber stuff at the moment every day. Apparently, that's the shit. Yeah. Man. So, I think what that does is also strengthens bones and mm -hmm. so forth. So, that's all going on at the moment. I just got the phone to my mum before. And all these things have mentally strengthened me where... Death doesn't scare me because I appreciate the time I've had. I appreciate the time I've had with my mum, my dad, my sister, my family, Adam as a kid, like my auntie who passed away a few years ago, very similar. Um, so I appreciate the time. Like, for instance, my friend Adam, he had three three boys under five at the time. Right. They're, they <coughs> had five, three, 18 months with their father. I had... Um, 30 odd fuck it, I'm just trying to think now 32 33 years with my dad before mm -hmm. he got sick so it's a long time it's a long time to get get the life lessons you need have that supportive fucking person around you the bloke that takes you to fucking motocross riding football fucking all these kicks the footy in the park with you all these things so that's why like the the loss that I've had in that has really made me want to be as present as a parent as I can be as That's well. Awesome. So like, Kiki, let's go kick the fucking footy out the front. Let's go do this. Like, let's go to fucking Europe snowboarding. Let's go to Thailand and go train. Let's go to fucking Fiji because we're at school holidays and we're at home and you're doing my fucking head in. <laughs> like, just these things. And it's like, let's go to the beach. Let's do this. Like, mm -hmm. the other night I said to her, I was like, have you ever been swimming at night? She's like, no. And I said, let's go. Mm -hmm. So we go for a swim at night absolute shit in ourselves because yeah. there's fucking sharks, sharks everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> so we went to Yanship had a swim I was like at least it's kind of fucking sectioned off like yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a real keen shark if it's in here <laughs> so then we did that like all these things and because of the the great um, uh, I guess structure my parents had and the things they built for me to be the, the person I am passes through so I really do appreciate the time I have with my child because who fucking knows? I might mm -hmm. get sick or fucking whatever. Like anything can fucking happen at any day. So it's like I look at all the times where like I get I get sad and I get down that my father's not there or my auntie passed away on Christmas and my sister's going through all this and my mum still has lung cancer. She's just a fucking tough old bitch. Yeah. Won't let it fucking beat her and just awesome. chugs Bundy and fucking smokes darts Fuck and she yeah. steams. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Going. yeah. <laughs> Good Australian woman. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like those kinds of things. So like I fucking love when my child just calls her. Mm. Nana, what are you doing? Like what's going on? Like we'll just sit on 
bloody every morning we're driving to school we'll call my mum my mum will talk utter nonsense we don't understand what she's fucking talking about because she's been at the pub <laughs> or she's been at the bowls club or the fucking footy club <laughs> went to the surf club do you remember this fucking person like she's listing names I'm like I've got no fucking idea what you're talking about and Kennedy's like who what is she on about so like you appreciate those fucking moments because yeah. it can all be fucking gone mm-hmm. and it's like we get this one fucking thing we get you get to live this life. If you're lucky, you get to have a kid and then you live through the fucking kid. Like yeah. you, what their fun is becomes your fun. Yeah. Like I'm not going to the fucking ice skating rink by myself because I'll look like a fucking weirdo. Yeah. But Kiki wants to go ice skating. I'm going ice skating. Want to yeah. go bowling? We're bowling. We're doing this, doing all these fucking things because I, it makes me feel young. Mm. It makes me appreciate what I have. Yeah. I have this legend of a kid that wants to do cool shit and we just continue to evolve then that's the best way of fucking putting it because i've got to evolve as a father where she's evolving as a a woman you know like she's going to get a boyfriend soon and chances are i'm gonna have to probably beat him up (laughs) (laughs) no no but no but like she's warning yeah she's gonna get a boyfriend and then like hopefully the the man that i've been to her puts the fucking the the ceiling so fucking high that she'll have a bloke that will know that he's got to do the fucking very best by her mm. because and that's all I fucking want I want everyone that's in her life regardless if it's a, a regardless if it's a, a female or, or friends at school or teachers at school or or a boyfriend or whatnot just to treat her with respect yeah. and and give her the respect she deserves because she's a cool little kid um, we have our moments but I'd like to think that I have um, uh, been a good dad and fucking very supportive dad because I never wanted to miss out on anything. Mm. I think what you're doing right now is what I kind of aspire to be in, like a, in a father. Mm. I think I think that's like you you lay a good template out on even even in the way you did things prior to becoming a father. Mm. Like you 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 got yourself quasi famous mm. in the metalcore scene yeah. you know quite famous in the metalcore scene but in the metal scene in itself and now you've opened yourself up into podcasts like doing podcasts and doing them yourself even mm. um be doing am I, can i talk about what we talked yeah about? yeah becoming a speaker and all this stuff yep it just leaves a path for or like a trail of media that your daughter can always refer to yeah you know, like when she gets older, what it was dad talking about yeah. in 2023 yeah. Yeah. or 2024, you know? Yeah, and I think, like, and, I, and and don't get me wrong, I've said some fucking stupid shit in the past and I've got myself into trouble and so forth when it comes to being very outspoken. Mm-hmm. But I like to think there's always, if you're, if you're a dickhead at some points in your life, which at times I was an egotistical fuckwit, I was mm-hmm. in a band. Weren't we all? Yeah, I thought, I, I thought nothing could be fucking better I probably at times thought no one could be better than me is mm. because I was in this fucking big band. And it quickly it all comes crashing down and you realise that oh, there's times there I was a fuckwit and there's times where I needed to learn, I needed to grow up and whatnot because, like I said, everything happened so fast. We were given the fucking world on a platter, like as far as we're overseas, <laughs> we're touring, we're fucking like in this like somewhat fucking very big band at the time. And then... So you're kind of like, oh, fuck, yeah, like I'm so cool. But now I'm like, I recognise the dickheadness of my time and I learned, I feel like I really do feel like I grew grew a lot when my child was born. Mm. And it made me like just appreciate what I'd done, where I'd been and whatever because not there's not many um, uh, kind of jobs and pathways you can get what I got. Like mm. like I said earlier, comedians and so forth, they're out busting their ass, they're touring, they're so forth. So they do. Yeah. Band people, DJs, so forth. Yeah, but Mate, there's no like truck driver that's like, nah. farm the yeah, shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, fucking can't wait to be in Dubbo again. <laughs> like, but that's, that's the thing. Like, it's like, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to be in London or I'm going to be in fucking Munich or I'm yeah. going to be here, there and everywhere. Like, we're going to Europe, so we're going to be in fucking Paris Mm. Go for a, what are we doing? God, let's go get a coffee and walk to the fucking Eiffel Tower. Mm. Get a fucking photo for the 10th time. Yeah. Like all these things. So there's not many jobs where you're like, oh, I'm going to become a fucking diesel mechanic 
oh, I better go start working on trucks in yeah. fucking New York tomorrow, <laughs> fucking North Carolina the next city. day. Yeah, like so I was fucking lucky in that sense and got lucky because mm. music's a fucking hard thing. Everyone yeah. doesn't get as lucky. I see these people on social media and they're busting ass, they're recording and whatever and I hope, I hope everyone gets to make it but everyone doesn't. That's yeah. as simple as that. So it's like, and nowadays it's like the... Like you said, the the somewhat famous and whatnot. I feel like that's helped me with business. People from overseas wanting to come work. Of course. Like I talk to artists all the time overseas and I'm like, come out for a fucking guest spot for a bit. Like mm. I'll put you up, like whatever. Um, and we've had like artists from Scotland and Brazil and so forth. Like one of the Brazilian blokes, Ray, went back to Brazil not long ago and needed a fucking prom queen shirt signed for one of his friends who's like an absolute super fan Sick. and so for some reason i have a box full of old shirts oh, like nice. a so i gave him one that's probably fucking 15 20 years old okay. that's brand new oh, wow. that, yeah i've got a box full of brand new shirts i just <laughs> fucking ended up i've got heaps of shit like that like just ended up on the fucking finish of a tour and, yeah and then um so like cool shit like that and then i just like chick came from scotland she asked someone at the tattoo shop where should she go and they're like Crafter from fucking Prom Queen and Confession as a fucking shop. Message him. Message. She live, um, lived here for two years, tattooed for two years. Oh, wow. So, like, just those little fucking things. And there's a lot of washed up musos that are successful tattoo artists. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like, yeah. And trust me, I say washed up fucking in the nicest it's way because nice I'm a washed up musician yeah. that owns a tattoo shop there's some that did fuck all fuck, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 there's, yeah there's definitely a lot of people that did fuck but I all. think it translates I think if you're a really good musician you're a great artist yeah. and if you could just like funnel it into something else well then like it yeah. will come down and I think that what I, what I learnt from music like just the the highs and lows of it mm. really helped me with the business perspective like all we're dealing with with money, shady promoters, fucking... It's all worse. Yeah, like, you always got a budget. Mm -hmm. Like, you're constantly like, okay, well, tomorrow the fuel's going to cost $100 fucking dollars and the hotel's going to cost this and whatever. Okay, yeah. well, we made $27.50 last night. <laughs> so, fucking <laughs> into the bank account we go. <laughs> like, just little things like that. So, it helped. And then when I started managing bands and working within labels and so forth then when i went out on my own and started like business shit i was just like this is the same but different and there's there's always like and it's what we we're saying about the parenting there's always more to learn and so mm -hmm. forth same as business there's always more to learn i'm always evolving now it's like well we need to do more reels we need to do more this that and the other but that's also the conversation within the workers. We all give opinion. We're open to opinion. Yeah. We're open to change. And we're open to what needs to be done as far as growing the business as well. Yeah. Do you think that there's a potential for a sound wave in Perth again? Mm. Problem is it costs so much. Mm. Like we did one show here last year. No. Yeah, one show. And I think off the top of my head, I think the amount that came in was about 15000 at the end of it. Mm -hmm. I reckon we spent 14000 just on the cost of doing WA. Whoa. So the flights were really expensive at the time where everyone's flights was nearly $1,000. Mm -hmm. Gear hire, um, van hire, hotel was a couple of grand. You know, it added up really, and pay the supports. It added up really fucking fast. Mm. So it's like, you, know, you get fifteen grand coming in and you're $14,000 thing and you've, spent fucking weeks or months booking this organizing this the tour promoter wants a bit of fucking cash all these like bits and pieces mm -hmm. so the cost of sheerly coming here isn't worth the risk for a lot of big promoters and hence why a lot of promoters don't even bring stuff here like right. bring with horizon not coming architects don't come mm -hmm. parkway drive will come amity will come the aussies will come that's what i was thinking of doing like a like if we could somehow find a way to get an Australian sound wave, mm. you know, like get the Parkway, get the Amity yeah. Affliction, get mm. all the big names mm. from Australia to do Australia. Yeah. To remind us of our scene over here. Cause mm. I think we are losing like touch with the Australian scene because Perth is disconnected now oh, from 100%. the East coast. Yeah. yeah. It's, and I went to 
see this band, the Acacia Strain, the other night. It's probably the first thing I've seen in ages. So that How was, was that? Heavy. Heavy. His voice sounds like a fucking de- like full blown demon. <laughs> He's also Sick. he's also in his forties now. So. Oh what! And so the first time we toured together was fifteen years ago. Uh, Case of Strain, Case of Strain, Parkway Drive, Suicide Silence. The day to remember, confession. You played with Suicide. Yeah, I, I, I t- with t- Mitch. Yeah, I knew Mitch well. Whoa. Yeah, so well, the first time we went to the states, not the first time. Sorry, when we went to the states in '05. Mm-hmm. We were like going out west and we're doing a show in arizona and everyone's like oh we, you're doing it with these myspace bands and we're like fuck and, and then they said who they were and they're like job for a cowboy suicide silence and we're Sick. like mm, never heard of them <laughs> job for a cowboy sounds like the dumbest band name it's ever so, so heavy <laughs> but we're in i killed the prom queen which also <laughs> fucking sounds stupid so this is going to be a fucking a ripper so then i met mitch that night then um stayed in touch then i a year and a half later i went out we bury you dead and it was bury you dead stick to your guns suicide silence mm-hmm. on a headliner stayed in touch they'd come out all the time and and so forth so yeah we knew each other well and um devastating way to go right? insane insane because it's like that band could have like yeah, they're, 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 I put them still at the top of that fucking genre. Yeah, but like they probably could have had the success of the artist murder and oh, so forth in yeah. Europe. Like they had that after Mitch had that real drop off. They did some weird shit. Yeah, like, they, um, the hard. you only live once song and yeah, all that shit. It yeah. was weird. Yeah, so yeah. they they did um they did the, the oh wait no that no, was with Mitch. No, nah, Mitch was that. But then they did that weird one with like. Oh, fuck I'm thinking it was like Bob Rock or one of them weird producers like it wasn't him mm. but it was one of them like fucking somewhat metal fucking producers that kind of yeah why do I think Bob Rock it wasn't him poor bloke I've just chucked him <laughs> under the bus to say he's done a shit I can see that hey, that, he's, I, don't, I think what does he do Metallica mm. I'm thinking yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> I but, was like uh, I don't nah, think it was nah but it was like oh, fuck yeah, this is where you need someone to fucking look it up. I can look it up. Uh, it was... What album was it? The fucking... But they recorded it really so weird. So it was after Mitch? Yeah. Oh, it's self-titled. Self- so... Right. Self-titled. It was Ross Robinson. Ross Robinson? Yeah. Okay, so not Bob Rock. Sorry, Bob, for <laughs> fucking throwing you under the bus. Anyway, the Ross Robinson one sounded like garbage. Fucking shit out. So you have to listen to it later. It was shit. <laughs> I wonder what 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 is what goes through people's heads that they get to the final part, like the mastering of the album, mm. and they listen to it and they're like, "That's it, that's that's it." And then everyone's like in the room, like, uh, uh, "Fucking don't like know, shifty eyed <laughs> yeah, dog." Don't, don't, don't know if that's fucking it, hey fellas. <laughs> but like, I like um, I like how Parkway have evolved into ch- trying things that's still catchy like it's like they f- they seem like the australian ramstein yeah they want to be though yeah. like i think like they they want that big wall of festival fucking sing along yeah and then the architects went and did their weirdness like so it's just also exper- experimenting as a musician to keep it interesting for yourself because yeah. you can only write so much medical but then i like the way um bring me do like a bit of fucking weirdness. Then there's big catchy bits. Yeah. Ollie's still fucking death growling and yeah, fucking yeah. chaos fucking vocals. Like, so not only can he sing, but he's still got heavy vocals and still like does it. I remember so. when they first like started doing the singing tracks. Yeah. And everyone was like, ah, oh, he shouldn't do that. Yeah. And then that's what they're known for yeah. is like the singing tracks. Yes. Which is kind of wild. Like yeah. you can become something greater than your your first victories you know mm. like we, if everyone's two step into parkway drive back in the day nobody would think that they would come out with what they've got now nah, nah. you know like the the prey yeah like all those that that's the, such a crazy album that reverence mm. album yeah i was like what is this Because yeah. this isn't parkway yeah. like not what i know but then like after like recalibrating what i really thought about the album because i was like i want something fucking hard take yeah. me but take me back to boneyards or yeah something, yeah you 
And then I was listening. I was like, no, this is like, this is the the, the dry aged version of mm. Parkway. Yeah. Well, you got to look at it like this band is playing to 50,000 people in Europe. Yeah. This band is not playing the PCYC in fucking Wagga Wagga. <laughs> like where cunts are showing up with fucking Nikes on and fucking basketball shorts and they're going to two-step on a fucking floor that's like slippery. They're like, they're like fucking... Okay, no more fucking putting oh. fingers in the air every time there's a fucking fiddly guitar bit. <laughs> yeah. It's now a fucking European festival where there's fire and fireworks shit on the stage. Yeah, yeah. And Winston's like the conductor, you know? He mm. comes out, he's dressed, he swaps outfits. The rest of them are fucking standing on platforms that fucking move oh, and all yeah, this yeah. shit. And like last last year That's when true. I went to... I went and stayed in Byron for a few days and Parkway just finished the tour. And it was, I think... Are they still living on Parkway Drive? No, nah, Jed, Jed does though. Jed does, yeah. And so he's, the parents, like Ben's parents are still there. Jed is still there. Um, he actually said Jaya, who plays bass, is now staying there a bit because he, he where he bought was out of town right. um, on more of a farm kind of style place. Right. So he's just staying there. So he surfs more like when the surf's pump, he doesn't have to drive an hour home. Because they still record at Jed's, right? Um, no. So the last, I believe last time they recorded between Jeff's house, Winston's house, the studios. I think they, 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 they've all Maybe got computers. Jeff's. Yeah. And I think like Jeff does the predominant, predominant shit at his house. Yeah. The video stuff of them jammings, I'm pretty sure Jeff's basement um, when the, for the Netflix stuff. And I think maybe that was when they finished that doco or whatever that was. The was, underdog story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, I was in Byron a few days after that and just caught up with Winston. Um, yeah, I had Kennedy there for a few days and stuff. He was just saying how crazy it was. He was kind of giving his parents and us a debrief. And then we leave and Kiki's like, who was, what band's he in? I said, the band you got a jacket on of. And he was asking you where you got it from. And then she's like, Jed gave it to me. And he's like, Winston's like, yeah, that jacket's like 15 years old. The jacket's older than you are. Like, it's like brand new. It was in a bag, just sitting in a, in a, in the, parkway basement for fucking 15 years yeah so like it's cool to someone to come home from a tour mm. and kind of give you a bit of a rundown and they're like he's like saying he was just like it was fucking psycho mm. and like just hear them they're in a real good place is also fucking cool because when they were the bands go through those things like like i said me jonah jj kev sean we all didn't talk for fucking so long over time and like losing because um sean that played bass in prom queen um took his own life a few years back so oh what i didn't hear about that yeah so he um probably nearly three years ago now damn dude. yeah it's just post covid so when that kind of happens it it either um it, it changed my perspective on what the damage music can do also mm -hmm. like it can bring the highest of highs but the low lows are you're done with a career where everyone like it's all eyes on you yeah everyone wants to be your best fucking mate everyone wants to be on your tour mm -hmm. fucking girls are messaging you fucking dudes are messaging mm -hmm. you like the fucking works you know like record labels are messaging you fucking bands are messaging you as soon as that's done and you're not on tour mm -hmm. most of that stops you're not in a cool band anymore you're not as important but like and that's where i think we may have of reinvented myself in in a different space where other people struggle because they're stuck thinking that it can't get better than that it probably can't in a, in a terms it just gets different mm. so like for me i love going to fucking work i love hanging with my child i love going to ride my motorbike i love doing all these things and it's not going to be the same mm. the shows that we do in the future confession or where the prom queen does something someday it's not going to be the same as it was it's going to be but that's then and there so i appreciate that for what it is as well mm -hmm. so now i appreciate every fucking day that i have because i had such a good fucking cool experience in this fucking whirlwind of a life as a band but some people they don't want the dream to die the dream doesn't have to die because the dream's always there mm -hmm. you live the fucking dream 
you've just got to reinvent yourself. And whether that's finding that job you want to do or fucking more travel or working a job you fucking hate to then have the money to travel like everyone has a different thing like everyone working in the mines doesn't fucking love working in the mines no. but they fucking do it to make ends meet then to live for half the year or fucking uh whatever the time is do it you're two and one whether you're one and one mm -hmm. they, they make enough money to then if, if you're on one and one it's pretty good you have half the fucking year off mm -hmm. or fucking if you're on two and one you're on a quarter of the year off which is fucking still pretty cool you got plenty of time to travel and so forth if for that week off or, or fucking whatnot but yeah, it's cause if you get like a week off you get like three right yeah because you got a week on either side of that yeah yeah. yeah yeah so if you if you can um if you can just reinvent yourself after music and that's a lot of like how i said about the public speaking and stuff that's where i want the kind of stuff i want to talk about because the res the what happened was a guy called hoppo um played in a band called miles away from here he took his own life Damn. about this it's very close to this time um a few years ago and then within a month sean took his life and they Ooh. were very close friends right and they had different battles different drug addictions different hop had like drug drinking and so forth battle after a music career mm -hmm. sean had a drinking problem and so forth and so does every like, honestly like all these fucking bands and whatnot, there's a lot of people in big bands that have drug problems or drinking problems or whatnot. Yeah. And it probably gets worse when your career's done because you're trying to fill a void that's no longer fucking there. And that's what's fucking sad. And I fucking hated it because so many of my friends have really struggled. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I can give them advice. I would be on the phone to Sean a lot. We were on the phone days before... And there was nothing that I could say that would probably would change the the, the mindset, the perspective, and the outcome. Yeah. So it's like, and and when after after Hoppo took his own life, a, a couple of friends, um, a couple from Melbourne, were on the phone, um, uh, fucking and talking about like how concerned they were for Sean, mm. and like, I was like, okay, like I'll talk to him and, and try and. So we were, I called him a bunch in the next few weeks and so forth. He called me a few days before, messaged me a couple of days before saying about running into a few of our friends and so forth. And then by the Monday, I had a phone call saying that he was gone. So that, that factor is like, I think it's a, a, a big thing where he was probably pretty lost, didn't know what. You, you're one minute you're on fucking tour in all over Europe and all these places and whatnot and then next minute you're trying to work out what you're going to do as a job mm. or what you're going to do that's going to make you happy or maybe there's a relationship breakdown or whatnot I don't know the full extent of everyone that I've ever known's reason for suicide and so forth but I always think it fucking hurts me but I hope that they're no longer hurting like for me with Sean, he's he's gone. I can't make that call again. I fucking um, still look at all the photos and all the stuff and I fucking reminisce and whatnot. But if he wasn't happy being here and he wasn't happy with the life and how life had panned out and so forth and he was hurting, I'd rather the pain not exist for the for my friends. Because if, if, if you can go to, whether it to be a counsellor or whether people in life go to a rehab or they go to a wellness clinic or whatever if they still come out and it's, it doesn't feel good it's like and it's probably like I, there's there's a lot of different opinions on suicide where people are like yeah it's fucking weak it's fucking this it's like that no it's not nothing's weak if that's just not what you if life's not f good you're fucking upset every day you're depressed you're like, and I've seen friends with like real bad depression where they won't even get out of bed. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I I don't I never I never fucking look down on on suicide. I just look at it. I hope they're in a better place. Yeah. I hope they're in a happier place. And that's all I can. That's I all agree. you can hope for after it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, one the one thing that I dislike about the choice to do that as a human is you're limiting. Like, was he a father? No. 
So no. you're like, what if what if he had a kid yeah. and then, you know, yeah. his life changed like yeah. it did for you? Yeah. You and know? that's that's the thing I always try and say to everyone that's fucking struggling is tomorrow is going to be better. Yeah. Because if today's... I thought you guys like, blow a load and something. No, no, no. no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go get some chick fucking <laughs> pregnant. Um, no, nah, but I, I think that if you tomorrow, like if today was fucking shit, mm. how can it tomorrow be fucking worse? Yeah. If you're feeling if rock, you're rock bottom... bottom yeah. yeah to, that, that's that's your worst fucking day mm. so tomorrow may be fucking magical you might go to the fucking beach and fucking like you might meet someone that's going to change your fucking life forever or you might fucking get that opportunity from a fucking band i got kicked out of fucking bands before i fucking quit bands before i was at rock bottom as far as I didn't think things were going to change for me. And then I got that message and that fucking thing where it's like, do you want to join this fucking band and move to America? I'm like, may as well. Like, let's fucking yeah. try. And then it's like, oh, even to the point where like last year, it's like I was looking to open another shop to help a friend out like who was uh, the lease where they were was fucking done and whatnot. And then someone messaged and goes, hey, I want to move out of this tattoo shop in Leaderville, it's fucking thing do you want to take over the lease done fucking send me the details i'll fucking sign it got that shop now that shop's killing it it's mm -hmm. like Leaderville has always had a fucking special place for me because hq's across the HQ, fucking road yeah. spent half my fucking music career playing fucking <laughs> sweaty fucking shows in there to um, 35 yeah, people yeah literally just jam-packed <laughs> fucking doors open because everyone can't fit in 15 fans yeah. and 15 <laughs> girlfriends yeah. Oh, yeah literally I was like fucking the first times we came first time I came to Perth we played the Swan Basement oh, and it was God. literally like this is a what shocker what would be like 90 degrees in there? oh it was fucking horrible and they I reckon it was us for very first time so it was pre probably pre us touring with Parkway Drive and stuff so probably 2003 mm. and yeah, fucking 30 people, maybe 20, 30 people. Fuck. Fucking like, yeah. And every, every, it was probably 10 bands. <laughs> Let's try and get more people there. I think every, and when the, the early days of coming to Perth, every fucking Perth band would be on the show because yeah. there wasn't enough bands. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, well, miles away from the ruins, fucking who else? Burn for me. I'm trying to think who else was around at that time. There was, minimal bands and then there was like last year's hero which were like a punk band oh what was that fucking oh no it's gone do you know what the, the, the something street oh. no, 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 no 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 you continue yeah but continue. the biggest one for us was like minimal bands in perth we were doing we had gyro support us on a few occasions and yeah. it's like how fucking far apart are we as bands <laughs> like complete different you know fucking, gyroscope yeah <laughs> end of the spectrum types of music oh, and it's like now a mate of ours who was like a massive prom queen super fan at the time now drums in gyroscope fuck yeah hell. sim sim who was in cup Athian before i was in it and stuff lived in melbourne ended up who, here in break even is he does he own the hen house? No, that's um, that's the old drummer. Yeah, right? that's that, that. Dave? No, no. Nah, um, S Steve? No, nah, <laughs> we're just fucking. Like, what well, you rattling the most <laughs> random names? Aussie fucking names. Darren. Um, I'm fucking Darren. But, but weirdly, I think that he's like Jonah's cousin or second right. cousin. Rob. Rob. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, Very, yeah. That's yeah, a, it's a, a close. Pro proper name. <laughs> it was me next yeah, one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that that fucking era was like minimal mi very minimal fucking um but yeah like i said the fucking tattoo the tattoo shop in that area has always had a lot of sentimental value as far as my history and music goes because i feel like hq not only helped our career mm. helped parkway drives it helped oh. all the bands now i think it did a lot for kids man mm. especially like kids struggling with mental health mm. and drug addiction and stuff like that it's a like, shame it's not like there's it's a shame there's not hardcore bands and punk bands and stuff playing there these days. Cause it's weird, right? Yeah. Because the same happened with Byron Bay. I saw like a chick sing in there once. Like maybe like three years ago. Mm. I last band I seen there was Dee's Nuts and Kennedy was a baby. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. So that was... What? Probably... Ten years ago? Nearly ten years ago. I reckon I, re I was holding her because I remember that. And she had the earmuffs on. on. <laughs> yeah. So... And that was the last thing I seen there. And then before that I seen north lane play with 
me and Adrian still sang. So oh probably, all right yeah. yeah so that was probably nearly that was probably ten years ago. Damn, uh, Savior, they're yeah, still yeah, cruising yeah, too, right? Still around, yeah. I seen um when I uh, went to Acacia Strain, yeah. I seen J Man and Sean from Make Them Suffer. Oh, so they just got back off a of Parkway tour in and, Las Vegas and that. Yeah, right? yeah. And then they did. I think they're about to do. Fuck, what did they say they're doing? A Euro tour, all the big festivals. I want to get, um, is it Sean? Yeah. The, the Scream Room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sean's good. Yeah, I yeah he'd to be him. a good conversation. Dude's fucking mind. Yeah, wild. yeah. yeah. He's a, and he's a real, like, polite, spoken, nice guy. Too, yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's great. Like, it's cool to talk to them about band stuff. Like, because I'm, 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 I'm pretty out of the loop. Mm. Like, I don't, I'm not calling anyone in fucking Parkway and going, how was tour? Yeah. Like we fucking hey we did that for twenty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, up, did, yeah. Like if unless we're going to play golf, yeah. Like I don't really speak about music stuff much. And like I said, like when Winston finished tour, he was kind of giving us all a debrief, including his parents, because he just got back. That's kind of cool. But yeah, I don't, I don't really hear much about touring stuff much anymore. So it's a bit like I'm out of the loop. But I also like to hear it. Yeah, but like, imagine that debrief, like. That is the most discount. Like, and nobody else that he knows knows what he's going through. Mm. Like on that stage, mm. known as Parkway. Yeah, you know, like giving that debrief to his friends and family it must just be like, "Hey, I just went to the moon." Yeah, you know, yeah. like it was like this. Everyone was wow. Yeah. What else can I say? Yeah. You and know? yeah, what's crazy is that was the the first one where they had so like the stage is a fucking catwalk. All the fucking way out. thing yeah and then like they start and then he just pops up oh, out of a fucking hole sick. and i'm like that's like some fucking <laughs> michael like, jackson yeah, shit. yeah i'm like you're fucking <laughs> you look like freddie mercury like wearing white just popping up in fucking yeah literally i'm like i, I said that i go you're fucking freddie mercury metalcore it's like fucking just yeah it's so, <laughs> it's so like it's like they, he's either in all black or he's in all white, white. it's like full now. contrast yeah. like it's fucking sick because he's a like very smart dramatic kind of person when mm. it comes to like just the way he writes lyrics the way he has his ideas for the stage shows yeah the fucking the whole stage show is them like they come up with it the film clip ideas it's all out of his brain yeah and he's always been like he was the leader right yeah from day dot yeah the, so, the boys didn't really have their shit together until he joined no nah, no nah, so like they basically were like dudes in the surf he was in the band they and then essentially they just started jamming That's so right. so he has just always been like uh, he's like 10 years older than no 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 i think to be honest, I think Jeff's older. Winston's my... Uh, Win I think everyone's like 41, 41, 42, oh, and I then... he was like 48. No, nah, no. Nah, Why so did I think that? Fucking... Sorry, Winston. Yeah, so Winston is... <laughs> is he look... He's looked fucking... He's looked the same age for fucking 20 years. <laughs> yeah. he looked, I look at him now. It's like, have you aged, cunt? Like, I feel like I'm fucking 400 years older than you. <laughs> the salt it's water, fuck, right? Yeah, like, just constantly fucking <laughs> cleansing himself. But then, like, I think... Gat, ben and Jaira are six, five mm. or six years younger than him. Yeah. So there's a, a big age gap. Well, not a big age gap, but there's an age gap between them. Didn't but fucking Jeff get guitarist of the year from Metal Hammer? Maybe. Yeah. Pretty good fucking, he's pretty good at it. Yeah. yeah. I think he got, maybe it was a couple years back. Yeah. He's it, fucking good at it. Like, it, yeah. For a, he's fucking. Writing riffs, bro. Yeah. And he's actually pretty good at golf too. Is he actually? Yeah, I'm claiming him. Like he's I've never beaten him. Really? I've tried for fucking years too. And like I I I, I on my day I can play all right. He can fucking hit it. Yeah, it was like he probably yeah, if he played more, he could fucking he could beat some people. <laughs> it's funny because that that crowd's now like heaps into golf, like all the young surf dudes and shit that were like now in their like thirties and stuff yeah, like that who were a bit bad. younger. They're like, oh, I better fucking not surf, just go play a round <laughs> yeah, of golf. Yeah. See it all the time, so it's cool in that sense. But yeah, it's it's great when fucking you can uh, still like go to shows and have a bit of a yarn to people about what they've got going on like That's younger it. bands come up have a chat about certain things like i think and for a lot of people is like some people still don't know i fucking live here some people come up and they're like i had no idea yeah. watching the club yeah. club good podcast yeah. i was like 
he fucking lives here? Yeah, and I've been here so long too. <laughs> People come up and be like, hey, fuck, what are you doing here? I said, fuck, I live in Alchemos. Like, I've fucking been here for 12 years. Well, you are out of the way. Yeah, You're yeah, in yeah, Alchemos, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, fucking yeah. South Geraldton. Yeah. Right. Yeah, literally, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's just fucking, it's cool to kind of one foot in, one foot out kind yeah. of thing. I can see see what I need to and like to see. And like, I, I like, I'll follow everyone on Instagram so you can fucking see our shows going people are doing good yeah it's good to, to it, see it's cool to see that you've got you've got like the initiative the the ambition the passion still for the scene and and uh with your endeavors that you're currently doing and hopefully this speaking hmm. thing fucking pops off i think it'd be really really good for people yeah and i think like nowadays because like um i don't know i talked a bit about it with fucking club good just the 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 level of using social media i see it as such a different thing now yeah like i want to use it to speak about certain things and maybe give a bit of perspective on certain things rather than just utter nonsense that's fucking out there it's like not saying i'm not going to speak nonsense because it's my story and my life is fucking it's my own nonsense you know yeah, i'm a fucking add mess that's fucking <laughs> running a million miles an hour yeah but then um like even the use, so we did um, like these toy things, so these toy drop things. For, so years and years ago, a person got tattooed at the shop. She was talking about the, the issues with um, kids in care and um, domestic violence and so forth. So we were like, okay, well, what can we do to help you, you in your role? And she's like, you can get us some toys and shit. It will help with Christmas time. I'm like, done. I'll fucking, I'll chuck in some money. I'll get people to donate, put it on Instagram. People start dropping stuff into the tattoo shop, put up a tree, fucking piles, toy shop pile up. Then the next year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So this year I did a, a TV YouTube series thing for Harley where they came out and interviewed me, talked about business and bands and a bit of everything, motorcycles. And then I was like, oh, we'll just do a toy run. Get everyone, I'll get Harley on board. They'll donate some shit. So, so um, Harley Heaven donated like six kids bikes. They donated thousands I bet about a thousand dollars in vouchers for ninety nine bike vouchers. Um, all these other businesses, big construction companies, all donated money. Um, everything that we got given, we spent. So we ended up around ten thousand wow. in just in donations and um, the Highway Harley donations and so forth. So we donated to a five different um, a, a youth uh, inner city youth place called Pickies. Um, a place called Lucy Saw, um, Sterling Women's Shelter, Starlight Foundation, and another one that was in Mirabuka as well, and one or two other ones. And another one actually last, the, we had a bit, bit of stuff come in after, and then another one called, um, fuck, I'm just trying to think. Um, it's Park, Parkerville, Parkerville Community something that's um more homeless youth kids and um ho homeless kids and so forth so they, they've got like a big campground and they get ki the kids even that have been in trouble and so forth so we, we just basically toys and sporting equipment and all the skateboards and bikes and just everything we could but using social media to just go well, hey, we're going to do this fucking ride. Mm -hmm. You're all going to pay fucking 25 bucks. Come hang out. We'll have a fucking Barbie. We'll ride from Harley fucking Perth to Harley Midvale and do a lap and fucking go down the coast and whatever. So there's about 200 bikes showed up. So to start off a first year and get that amount, you make a fair few thousand dollars. You have all these donations, people showing up with bikes and so forth. So then now, now what I'm working on is in winter, we're going to do one. And I actually hope it fucking rains to add to the perspective of si the situation. Mm. But we're going to donate sleeping bags and stuff to the homeless Sick. and work with a bunch of homeless <coughs> um, organisations. Yeah. Um, and then try and do a ride at night just a thing of the and that's why i said if it fucking rains well this is the shit people are sleeping in you know yeah. what's the like we'll, we'll ride from fucking somewhere to somewhere everyone can bring a fucking sleeping bag to donate mm. or you pay 20 bucks yeah so then that way there's like say 200 people show up you're giving 200 people a fucking sleeping bag yeah. so then they can have a fucking warm night's sleep yeah. we're all going home to our fucking beds mm -hmm. some people aren't some people are 
that whether it's the housing problem or whether it's a drug problem or whether maybe there was a fucking person who was a musician that didn't quite make it. So there's all these things that put it put like the luck that I've had in perspective where I go, okay, well, I can give back by such a small fucking thing of using my Instagram to get people together that will hopefully change someone's life, whether it be the kid that gets the football where they go, oh, I'm going to go kick the fucking footy and they go, oh, maybe I'll be a footballer or the art set, the, the art sets we've given or the skateboards or the fucking netballs or the boxing fucking stuff or whatever. Like mm. it may be just that little spark that this one kid needs or maybe this homeless person needs where they get a bit of food or they get a fucking um, a sleeping bag. At least a warm night's sleep might change their perspective for the next day. Yeah. So it's like, I, and I'm not a fucking dreamer where I go, oh my God, we're changing everyone's fucking lives. But for that day, it might at least make them feel fucking good, you know? Like mm. you get a fucking sleeping bag and you're not sure where you're going to sleep that night. At least they're fucking warm. Yeah. Like we're not going to be able to do anything on a mass scale where you get people into housing and so forth because we don't have that power. Start small. Yeah, so start small, give back where we can and use the social media for good rather mm. than bullshit, which is what I mainly used it for for so long. Yeah, yeah. I think that's important, dude. Mm. I think that's really cool. Yeah, and I think... If we can um, mo- get 200 people out the first year to a toy run, there's no reason why we can't get 400 next year, 500 mm-hmm. the next year, fucking thousand people. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Like it's it sky's the fucking limit with this kind of thing. Yeah. Because people can see and pe- appreciate what we're doing. Like the people that we're at these places really do appreciate what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And when they can't, when we come, and me and Kennedy go. We're like, we were fight headless chooks running around delivering shit and whatnot. And I can give her that perspective as well, where it's fucking really good to give. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're going to, she's going to get this stuff on Christmas Day. And in next year, she's going to get more stuff. And next year, some people don't get that. They don't get that luxury. Mm. They don't have like that great home life or whatnot. Like, maybe they're, and, for me looking at this thing it's like I get to wake up in my house she gets to wake up in her house there's a fucking Christmas tree or whatever some of these kids are waking up in homes because they're scared that someone might come get them you know Mm. like their father their mother their fucking whoever you know like they may be there for a fucking reason they may be taken away from the parents because the drug problem so fucking so fucking bad what does that kid what does that kid the kid doesn't deserve that so on Christmas day the least I can do and the least we can do, like, against the grain and everyone that's helped, it's just maybe that art set, maybe that footy, maybe that skateboard mm. that may give them a different perspective, different hype, go out and skate that day and fucking do a kickflip. Like, <laughs> it'd be fucking sick. Like, yeah. And, yeah, and I, and I just sit back and go, fucking, at the end of it, I'm fucking tired. I've spent a month doing fucking all this stuff. And I was dropping shit off until the day before Christmas. Mm. And it's like fucking what else am i going to be doing well that's yeah well how many people are you giving that fucking the the light to Mm. you know like somebody like a like a child doesn't really like you can't blame them for anything man you Mm. know like you can't blame them for the outcome that they were born into yeah you know so like to have the initiative to go out and like give give a random child that's going through some shit you know, like a a smile mm. on, on an important part of the year. It's yeah. fucking every kid awesome. deser- every kid deserves the smile on Christmas Day. Yeah. Every kid deserves the excitement of opening a fucking present. Mm. And that's why when it, the Parkerville one, I said to him after, I was like, happy to come up here and talk, whether it be about music, whether it be about life, whether it be about business. I said, I've got a different as um different perspective to what everyone else here has. I've got a different perspective to maybe sports people or whatever. And I said, but also, you're probably not going to find a musician that's in Perth that's probably gone through as much as far as touring the world and so forth. Like, yeah, there's, there's pendulums and um, carnivals and, and so forth, but it's very limited. Mm. There's Make Them Suffers and so forth that are touring yeah. the world nowadays. But I had a 15-year fucking thing of the highs and lows from everywhere from singing in a band to finding bands and helping them on big labels yeah. to managing bands I managed Zyder's Murder 
and just other bands in the you time. managed the artist metal yeah at one point really yeah they were difficult was that before or after he did the open shirt thing no nah, that was <laughs> before um it was around the first couple of albums oh before reign of darkness oh uh, yeah that. so just before marshy joined yeah okay right. he was about around the same time and Gary was still playing guitar. Um, there was a time where CJ was quite trying to quit, and then Wait, what? at the time yeah, he's quit fucking ten times. Has he? Yeah, and just. <laughs> but yeah, he was trying to quit at you that can't point. Get away, yeah. yeah, and then um, <laughs> and then the there was talks of the old singer coming back, who was a very big fucking part of the first EP that made him big, right. and there was a bit of that going on. It was just a lot for me to deal with, and. Candace had just got pregnant and stuff like that. And I was like, this isn't for me. I'm, yeah. I'm fucking I'm hard dealing with one band, let alone yeah. a band I'm not in and I can't fucking be there to coach them. <laughs> yeah, fair so, enough. And then Marshy joined and essentially was doing what everyone fucking wasn't. So he could basically went in and took the reins and handles handles it all still to this day. Mm. So it, it was just one of those things where I've learned a lot I've learned from mistakes I've fucking built on what I've got and I feel like I'm in a real good place and I said about the public speaking and so forth I'm I don't want to I don't want to give anyone I'm, I'm not out to give anyone advice on stuff that I haven't dealt with yeah. my advice comes from what I've dealt with and my perspective I'm not fucking trained in anything mm -hmm. mine's just on well, my perspective you're self-trained self-trained in i think I, I think you're a very like from the stories that you've told bro i i just one thing that i haven't seen from my crafter mm. is the the empathetic kind natured i i normally i just see yeah <sighs> yeah, you know? yeah that's the thing yeah, yeah. people and like uh, a few years ago my mum said something about she goes like you have this persona which is crafter mm. you sing in a fucking band you're this you're that you're yeah. fucking pissing people off on the internet and so forth which Correct. i did forever and then she's like and then there's michael who's learning to be a father um trying to be a business person trying to be a friend trying to be like all these other things trying to kind of like i wear the hat to everything and i'm just trying to evolve as me and then it doesn't exist until I'm home, you know? Mm -hmm. When I go on stage, I gotta put the act on. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the way it is. But then even when we went out last time I was talking about mental health and losing friends and so forth. So people can see and they I think also is when I talk about it it fucking hurts. Yeah. Like it does hurt to fucking not cry and stuff like that. And I remember years ago went away, did a show called Kennedy because it was her birthday to FaceTime her and all I wanted was the crowd to sing happy birthday. So when they start, I'm just fucking in tears. Yeah, like, I'm fucking falling apart. <laughs> like, I'm, like, trying to hold it together. Everyone's, like, everyone on the stage is, like, patting me on the back. And it's fucking, okay, I'm, like, I'm like, fuck, how am I going to hold this together? Yeah. And I was like, fuck, we've got to start ringing out or I'm going to fuck burst yeah. and probably fall apart. <laughs> so there's times like that where I just try and, like, yeah, like, giving. And even, like, when we did the toy run, it was like I had to talk in front of everyone and I was like, a little bit choked up simply for the fact that everyone was there for such a good cause mm. like it's like when it's warming you know and you're talking to people like i appreciate you all so fucking much yeah. it's like you've all came here you all don't have a fucking clue who i am yeah. and 200 of you cunts have brought your bikes here you've paid 25 fucking bucks you've shown up with toys why because i've made a fucking instagram poster like it's cool as fuck yeah. like and that's where you can look at people and go, there's some fucking people that really do care about other people mm -hmm. and want to make a change. And that kind of instance, you really see that... Because sometimes I feel like people don't, don't do enough. They don't use their social media for the right reasons. They, they use it for their... Self-gain. Self-gain. And yeah. it's like, I've got nothing to fucking gain anymore. Like, yeah. I fucking... What I gained was getting to tour the world. Mm. I had all that. Mm. I fucking appreciate all that. The only thing that I gain from now is, I think, just life, tomorrow being good, the next day being good, appreciating the people around me, my friends, my family, and the ones that are still here because I've lost so much. Like, I've lost friends to suicide, I've lost family to cancer, and I've got this little child who's 11, she's going to be 12 soon, she's starting high school, and fucking that's how I live. I look at what she's doing and go, fuck, I appreciate this so much. Mm. And that's all I can do because... 
that perspective though after going through all that the the touring and the craziness of it all that has to give you a level of gratitude to your younger self to say hey like you did it like mm. that's awesome i think when like you were talking about before about your was it sean yeah um uh bandmate sean who uh took his own life i think there's like there is something to the 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 level of gratitude to you to yourself and to what you have to like pull yourself out of sadness because mm. it's very very hard to be sad when you're grateful yeah yeah and i think i think people often when they're at their darkest it's hard for them to appreciate what what they were be, what they were what they had and so forth because they think that's the only thing that they're known for mm. like you if i was only crafter that was in a fucking band and fucking you know like in confession and in prom queen and fucking mates with parkway drive like if that was just me i would have been a very washed up musician yeah. in melbourne you know mm. with not much like if i didn't pull myself away from the music scene and find what was next for me but that's often the hard thing is you need to um nearly not forget about your past but you nearly need to just push it aside mm. to think about your future because if you're constantly this person the, the, like I can't evolve yeah. like if I was constantly the crafter persona complete utter fuck with at times the um, the version of me that I am and want to be could never have existed because mm -hmm. I think if I stayed in Melbourne and whatever I wouldn't have evolved to be who I am now yeah. because I would have still been caught up in the bubble of it all yeah you but broaden your yeah. identity now, and now it's like I go to a show and they're like what are you fucking doing here I'm yeah. like I fucking lived here for 12 years <laughs> fucking love it because no one fucking knows yeah yeah like it's like every now and again it's like there's artists that are music fans there's customers of music fans and so forth so we chat about music and stuff all the time but for me it's that they're my little safe spaces where I'm just like I go and hang with my friends. They're all artists. They fucking give me shit. They fuck. We give them give them shit back. They hide my fucking keys. Like mm -hmm. they do all this shit to me, and it's like because we're all fucking we're all mates. Yeah. I'm not just their fucking boss. I'm their friend. Yeah. And it's like we go fucking paintballing for a Christmas party. Well, who the fuck do they want to shoot the most? Me. You. Like, everyone's going for me. I was getting shot by fucking teammates behind me. Like, one of the fucking workers. I've got hammered. And he just turns around on cat, like he's got a GoPro on, yeah. and just rips another five into my back <laughs> while I'm trying to run away. Like, it's cool as fuck that we're on that level. Because yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm just a fucking person. I'm just trying to make fucking my business work. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to keep everyone fucking happy with where they're working and a great work environment and it's yeah it's it's a fucking it's all, always a bit of a balance mm -hmm. but i like to think that i've created good shops good places to be that i want to go hang out there yeah and that's what i want from everyone go to scarborough get a coffee fucking talk shit with kim the barista about fucking whatever sport he's fucking into this week yeah. soccer football fucking motocross fucking we'll leave going on a sunday or monday yeah or tuesday and we'll be talking about what happened in the footy what's happened in the soccer what's happened with the fucking motocross like we'll talk about what's happened in the fights yeah right, or whether right. It's boxing ufc or yeah. whatever but that's the like i don't know i, I kind of like remember in cheers they just hung around the fucking bar. <laughs> yeah. I saw, like, it was only yeah, ever that yeah, yeah, bar. Yeah, that yeah, bar. Yeah, That's yeah. what I feel like going to the shops is like. Yeah, right. Just hang out with a bunch of fucking mates and talk get nonsense and is then that, leave. Is, is your shop the one in Scarborough, the one next to Coles? No. So we're on um, Brighton, which is up the top. Up the hill. And then under the Quest building, down thing. Yep. So it's fucking huge. It's yeah. like a 150 square meter shop. Whoa. So there's like seven artists in there, three barbers, Hectic. coffee. Busy. Sick. It's always, it's a good spot. Yeah. Because like I felt, I've always felt like if we were down the bottom or in there, there's too many. We're in, we're at, and then they were a tattoo shop. Yeah. They had to fucking do tattoos. tattoos. We're not going to. We don't need 50 fucking cunts coming in off the beach going, yeah, I want a fucking this under my arm or yeah. fucking whatever. Like, yeah, I want a wave. Yeah, like, yeah, literally <laughs> just walk straight out of the water and fucking want to get a tattoo. We want shit planned. Yeah, yeah, we want yeah. to, uh, 
not be a, like a a shop where pe- too many people are kind of coming in because mm. it, it's an art it's an art space at the end of the day it yeah. doesn't need to be chaos yeah and i feel like those shops in those like i've always seen in bondi and fucking burley and fucking all these places like on the Goldie or whether it be Sydney or whatnot, they're just fucking chaos. There's 10 people standing in the fucking thing. I'm sure the money's fucking good, but the environment's just a bit too full on. Yeah. I've been around people all my fucking life, fucking close to me and fucking big things. I want it to be a bit more chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just need a bit, space. Yeah, I just need a bit more space, so, which is good. But yeah, that, that, that shop's doing good. Have you ever thought of opening one up in uh, Bali or anything like that? It's too many shops, there. Yeah. It's just a fucking... Saturated. It's just shops fucking everywhere. I went there years ago to look in Changu before anyone was in Changu oh wow way before that's fucking talking awesome. fucking seven years ago Damn. I was looking and There's then like four goats there yeah right yeah <laughs> it was literally paddocks and a few fucking villas there wasn't much being built and there was a lot of houses being um, a lot of property being built yeah and then now you go there it's a fucking chamozzle of it's people ridiculous. it's it's like Seminyak or Kuda or whatever with more vegan food yeah like yeah. literally it yeah, just yeah. seems like the cool place to be so I, I did that and went, went there years ago. Instead, I did Scarborough. Um, Good move. Yeah, and then... Um, <coughs> went Don't you think Scarborough has become like like a little LA? Like, yeah. Like a it's, little Venice? It's a bit uh, bit more Brazilian. There's a lot of South oh, Americans. Oh, there's a lot of Brazilians. We have, yeah. we have, I think, about five Brazilians working for us. Yeah? Yeah. But, um, between we, everyone, there's... What are we talking no, I'm there's, <laughs> no, we're talking. Um, there's a couple of Chileans. There's a Colombian. There's uh, Luis from Mexico slash California. Mm. Um, two of the barbers are Brazilian. Uh, I'm just trying to think where. Fuck. Did you get them all in the one say, say container? Or? No, <laughs> no, no. They they, they fucking randomly as you know one brazilian yeah, you, you know, know fucking 50 <laughs> it's literally like oh i know a guy yeah. and then you've got another artist or you've yeah. got another barber or whatnot which is cool Sick. um and then the the leaderville shop it's multiple like there's a couple chileans there there's three yeah i think fucking who else brazilian colombian a bit of every and I, I love the fact that it's a different culture of humans yeah. and even I kind of like the banter between the South Americans as well because they're like only a fucking border away, yeah. but they're one soccer team, like one soccer game away from wanting to like fight each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You, when the World Cup's on, it's like they're dark at each other. Really? Oh, yeah. They fucking... Brazil started to go down and like their mood, their mood just dropped. <laughs> and like I was at the start of the World Cup, they're like, you can have Argentina. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll have Messi. Yeah, Done. yeah, yeah. And then fucking, and then that, 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 that wasn't fucking, <laughs> by the end of it, they were fucking off it. It's like, fuck, you just gave me this team. <laughs> yeah, they had yeah. no idea about the fucking game. Yeah. And then fucking, but yeah, that, that's what also creates a cool dynamic is just different people, different parts of the world, different of perspective. Course and different types of art and mm. just ways that they became artists. Like some of them just started at like in Brazil, didn't have much money, so forth. Some of them were fucking like, Array was a marine biologist mm. and went, ah, oh, nah, I'm going to be a tattoo artist. Mm. Fuck, it's a big difference in life. Like fucking dissecting fish or fucking carving something into someone's skin. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. wild. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and it's like, when you talk about it, you're like, fuck, like, it's a like proper degree, you know. Yeah, like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. this is a kind of a work on the job. Listen <laughs> to this bloke next year or the woman next year, and they're going to teach you how to do this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you better be good at art. Mm. Like it's not. It's That's not, the prerequisite. Yeah, you yeah, need to be good yeah, at you art. You need to be good yeah, at art. Yeah, and it's not yeah. like there's at the end of the day there's a big fucking two year uni course. No, no. It's just a fucking how you going? Yeah, you good isn't bloke? that strange though? Good that- person. That there's no like school that you have to get like it's almost like being a parent I think you know? they tried I think people have tried and I think the fact of it's pretty frowned upon yeah like fuck we don't need to start a school and have 5,000 artists just yeah. tattooing from their shed yeah because it doesn't art is subjective right mm. and there sh- but I do feel like there should be a standard Oh. But that should be made up by the owner, right? Yeah, that's that's where we set the standard. From you. We set the standard by having good artists, good people. Yeah. Good rapport with the customers and mm. just having a great environment. Yeah. I, I think it, it starts at the top. Like, 
you have to create a good environment for all your people yeah. and then as it goes down you create good artists and then good customer base and then a good good like good environment and yeah. good people coming in that's the foundation so and it's like when it comes to like and it's similar to like music stuff it's like you have one big band in a fucking town mm. that's doing well mm. that's mentoring the younger fucking bands and yeah. you have a window a, an umbrella of bands and a music scene formed from that like yeah. when Byron Bay was on top mm. there was Parkway Drive there was 50 Lions there was In Hearts Wake there was all these other fucking bands coming out of there Chuck Norris Street Youth all these bands were like all fucking killing it and then Brisbane at the early early days there was all these bands coming out then next it was like Adelaide had all these bands. Then Melbourne had. Nowadays Sydney has like Polaris, North Lane, like coming out, Light as Murder, like all these bands who kind of came out at a similar time. It's kind of like you learn from the top and then you create and you grow mm -hmm. around that and then you look up to that. Like if you look at an artist and they smash some fucking psycho realism piece out and you're like, that's fucking sick. I want to be on your level. Yeah. So what do you do? You train, you try and you fucking practice and you fucking learn. Yeah. It's the same as music. You mm. want to be a good fucking guitarist? Watch someone else play guitar. Watch videos of people playing guitar and fucking fiddle your guts out on a guitar yeah. until you get better. Mm -hmm. Like I had this thing where, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to that. I had this thing where I'd like, in COVID, I just wanted to get better at guitar, and I did. I'm fucking shit, but yeah. I got better. Right. And I just like playing guitar. I've got fucking um, shit set up, so I'll chuck my headphones on, I fiddle away, and fucking. Do you know anyone wants a Hughes and Kettner? No. No. Right. No, well, I'm just trying to. I haven't seen one of them heads since Parkway had them in 05. Yeah, no. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, fuck, do no, you know anyone that wants a guitar head these days <laughs> is a fucking, shit. yeah. What do you need a guitar head for? You got that thing <laughs> yeah. and you can put fucking STL tones on your computer and put your headphones anything in. anything these days. Nah. I don't know why people play instruments. Oh, you know? man, you press a fucking few buttons. Yeah, like nowadays it's like you can, like I've got a, I've got a, um, a combo line six yeah. which I fucking do on my phone. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you want a 5150? You want a fucking... Mesa, it's all called something else, but yeah. it sounds fucking pretty exactly close. Exactly the same. Yeah. Orange cab. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then, yeah. yeah, and I just change the mics. You can change the fucking, change the mics, the speakers, the fucking heads. You fucking program everything on the fucking board yeah. and you just tap away. And it's yeah. fucking that simple. And then they've got the same thing with, um, what's the one? The Kempers. The Kem yeah, the Kempers are the one everyone uses. Every big band takes them on tour. That's and then, fun. yeah, so it's like, I think you can put it against a fucking amp too and it copies it and stuff oh. and does like it's it's like magical it's all Parkway use I'm guessing Bring Me use them Architects all the big bands use them I think um, North Lane and that use maybe they were using they started by using Axe Effects then they were campers I think they all have a lot of stuff in pedals now so they yeah. just pack up their pedals they plug that in and then that'll go through that the PA it's not even it's not even amps anymore no it's nothing on stage nah. When was, unless you go see something local, you go see a big band. When was the last time you seen fucking amps on the no, stage? No, that's true. Yeah, like You never see it. Nah, they've got fucking... Like ACDC? Yeah, like, no. <laughs> even, <laughs> even fucking Amity, like, have fucking screens across. Yeah. There's shit down the sides. Like, there's all this stuff. It's like, is any of that... Like, if there's amps, they're probably not even on. Mm. Like, if they're fucking on stage, they're there for a prop. And yeah. then everything is in a computer fucking campers all these things and all the shit that's out the back and it yeah. runs into a desk all the drums are triggered yeah, yeah all the drums are triggered it's like there's fucking double guitars because bands that have one guitar recorded with two yeah and it's like well i watched the alkaline trio the other day which is um the guy that was in blink one two for a while right and it's like on a tv show and he starts and he's playing the fiddly bit and there's a whole guitar bit underneath it's a fucking three-piece band but that's just music now like they're, 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 they're going to do it on a recording and no one looks at it and goes 10, 10 20 years ago if you'd seen that you'd be like they're not even playing yeah that's bullshit yeah. nowadays you're like oh you know fuck do what you gotta do it's gonna sound better like it's it's just the, what you do on a recording can't always be played it's almost lip syncing though, oh it? it's, it's lip syncing it's with guitar an instrument. Syncing. yeah yeah with like an instrument if yeah. you if you watch amity or something they've got multiple guitar tracks if you watch 
even confession, we've got a fucking computer playing the whole time yeah. with all orchestra shit, all the noises, True. the samples, yeah. all the bullshit. Yeah. There's extra guitars in there to make it full. Full. Yeah. Like, there's all this stuff. And it's like, press a fucking button and let's go. Yeah. And then you have computer problems and. Nowadays it's like fuck the computer just fucking the clicks out like it was, <laughs> have some fucking moments you look and you're like don't you don't you think that is the the reason as to why like vocalists these days because like take Alex Terrible from Slaughter to Prevail you can't mimic that no no there's one I I think in the in the years I've been in music I think. There's probably a handful of dudes that have sounded like that. Yeah. Like really. Like on stage, yeah. he sounds the same that he yeah. does recorded. Yeah. And yeah. like, I thought, I thought that he was like heavily, like, I thought that there was some processing? sort of processing. Yeah, like same. Motherfucker. Yeah, like, same. I he, thought it yeah. until I had seen the live shit and I was like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. 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 I think he's got a combination of ang anger, Russia and steroids. <laughs> Like <laughs> the way he bashes himself oh, in the fucking head with like the mic. He, yeah, he's on a fucking. He's Have, on did you all see the fucking girl he just married. No, nah. bro. Russia. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, no. This well, he's a fucking. <laughs> he's an angry guy. He's obviously killing it. He's fucking huge. He's multi-millionaire. Yeah, no, but definitely be. A, he's probably making millions just off his YouTube. To be just, honest. Yeah just those videos from back in the day the shit that he was saying was just fucking like i listened to these interviews that he was saying about the numbers he was doing was just insane it's like upload a video of him gr fucking death growling over a fucking taylor swift song and it'd get like five million views <laughs> and then so say you put that on there and you get say youtube six or seven thousand um six or seven thousand dollars per million plays yeah then you go Oh, we've got that on YouTube, on Instagram too, or whatever. He's probably, it's just money, 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 money. Like, you look at what the, the big content creators on like Whistling Diesel and all these other people, like um, Heavy heavy D Sparks, like all the motor car dudes. Yeah. They're all like driving around in fucking psycho cars, helicopters. That's so true. they must be making like insane money. Because yeah. you look at them as like one, two, three million views on some of the videos. Some of them are more. But then you look at it and go, okay, well, there's musicians that are getting that. Yeah. So unless they're getting fucking stooged by the labels, there must be some serious money getting made. I don't just think you would fucking stooge a Russian. Nah. You know? Nah. That's what Not when he's wrestled a bear. Well, yeah, he's literally wrestling bears. <laughs> he looks, <laughs> and even in his wedding photos, like, I'm going to eat you. Yeah. Like he looks like he just looks like an absolute fucking <laughs> lunatic. Like he's psycho. a he's a fucking lunatic. Did and that see, scar, he he did it to himself. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did it to himself, and then he ate the bowl of meat that he took off. So the chances of him, <laughs> like fucking <laughs> murdering and eating his wife, is like very high by the looks of the yeah, way was, the man it was looks. Scarification, right? So he did that shit to himself. Yeah. If like Yeah, he probably will eat his wife. Pro no, but you know you know what's pussy. do you know what's funny? He's like career done, he's gonna get in all like you need a bad guy for a movie? I'm your man. Yeah. Like look at him. Like if like what's the, the Roadhouse new one? Yeah, he should Connor. be Connor McGregor. <laughs> yeah. Like I'd be way more scared of this cunt than fucking drunk Connor showing up. Yeah, I don't and think like, ever fucking yeah, wrestled yeah, a bear. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like fucking Yeah, exactly. If Connor wrestled a bear, he probably wouldn't have got beaten by Khabib. Yeah. Like, <laughs> literally. Uh, literally. If he fucking wrestled more fucking bears, yeah, this yeah. is where you're fucking up. <laughs> Too many pub fights with fucking old men, not enough fucking bears. Like fake this, fighting Jake this, Gyllenhaal. Yeah, this cunt's your fucking this guy's gonna fucking. <laughs> this like, is your roadhouse, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he's fucking roadhouse seven. How's the traps on the boy, eh? Oh, he's a fucking. He's unit. holding up a bear, though. Yeah, yeah, he's a fucking. You've unit. seen, you've seen where he wrestles him, right? Wrestles the bear. Yeah, you, you know that that's him making those noises, not the bear. No, listen. Oh, oh. you're not logged in. Who doesn't? Log I love, in? I love how he's got photos with like machine guns. There's MMA fights. <laughs> like he's literally like, what type of musician is just fucking? on youtube on the instagram i'll just up like 
because if you're say you're like in positions like that you're like okay well, what am i going to upload today it's going to generate traction it's going to get views going to make money <laughs> whatever he's like another bear photo another fucking I'll, I'll, another fucking photo of me with an AK-47 or, or an MMA fight I'm gonna fight someone like they're like, they're like and he's, he's business meetings with his fucking manager they must be like what the fuck like what do you mean we're gonna get an alligator for a photo he says his marketing strategy is just be brutal <laughs> That's, yeah. he's like let's bring back the brutal oh yeah so this is him where he's like Rrr. this is He's making these noises. <laughs> it's so good, though. <laughs> That's him. He keeps getting like under it too, like double underhooks. Yeah, I know. it's like, why, well, man? I don't. I think if it scratches your head, yeah. well, actually, if it scratches his head, it just gets another fucking scar. It's yeah. like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me your nails. I'm gonna fucking eat that. Do you know that band? I wrestled a bear once. Yeah. fuck you. Did yeah, you yeah, really? Yeah. Wait, but you know what's crazy is the chick that was in that band yeah. is the spirit box chick. You know the fucking. No. Well, yeah, she was in that band. Really? Yeah. And so was the guitarist. So they went from that, got married, and then went to do the thing. I, I, I read it the other week. I was like, she, oh, she was in that death, like that death metal band. Like they were from Canada or somewhere. And she ended up being one of the last singers because I think they went through a bunch. Yeah. And then because like, I think that, that, because I like, it comes up, I, honestly, on Kennedy's I, I'm TikTok, mm. like um, all the bigger kind of bad omens and, all those bands come up now and Spirit Box comes up and stuff. And I actually looked and I was like, this chick sounds like a psycho yeah. and also has a crazy singing voice. Mm. And then I was like, and then it was a flick of an interview and she said about it. And I was like, oh, I've heard of that fucking band once, like years ago. Because yeah. I thought, oh, these fucking nonsense band names have to stop. Like like I said earlier, we had a nonsense band name. Yeah, but, but it was, that was the antithesis of it all, right? Yeah. It was like, you got, I think now they're just scraping the, bottom of the barrel yeah. for anything that they yeah. can get yeah i think the and you, you hear down that nowadays i like look at like hardcore or metal f flyers and stuff and i'm like there's been 27 bands called that mm. like they're like r so run out they're just like oh no we'll just fucking call ourselves this even though there was a band from the same fucking town 10 years ago called yeah. that it's like and people don't really notice mm. Which is a weird fucking thing. I've still been trying to fucking figure out what I was thinking of. What would that what that band name was? And it was like something on something street. And it was the same word. Oh, no idea. Uh, knocker on Knock Street? No. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, no. it was a Perth band. Let me fucking How what I, what would I don't know what you type because you don't know what the word is. You're like expletive. Piss, you're pissing in the wind like, to try and find it. It's a almost name. like jumper on jump street or some shit like that. Predator no. on Predator Street. No, no, no. <laughs> nothing's ringing a bell. It might even be. I probably don't like. It might even have been. Pens. How's era. this? Alex Terrible. Suicide Silence. Suicide Silence. Buy a bubble wrap near me. <laughs> Kalamata <laughs> Olive. <laughs> Oh God! Wait, it's funny because like my my uh, YouTube is like um, done by like what's watched at work or what's watched at fucking at home. Yeah, and it's literally like sports, fucking how tos, yeah. and then Mr. Beast. <laughs> yes. Like me and Kiki <laughs> sit and watch Mr. Beast all the time. Like, Love it. He was just reviewing islands, and then we're like, oh, where are they? Where are they? Where's that fucking island that's all a theme park and it was just water slides and everything else like, I, I think it's maybe the bahamas or somewhere but it looks like go. fucking nuts yeah. i was like i was like can you stay there it'd be pretty painful though i reckon you need to go there one one day and then leave because imagine sleeping on a fucking island full of ten thousand kids like it'd be especially a theme I did, yeah, on the gold, I did on the Gold Coast. I did on the Gold Coast. Stayed at this place that was like water slides and all this shit. After the first day, I was like, oh, like, Kiki, we got, we got to get to Byron. <laughs> like, I'm done with... It wasn't even the fact there was that many kids running around. It was the parents in fucking, oh, yeah. like, funny shorts trying to be my mate. Yeah. Oh, you got a few tattoos there, mate. <laughs> I'm like... 
what do you do for a job? I'm like, I'm a drug dealer or something. Like, just, how am I going to scare you off? I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a murderer. Like, yeah. I'm a professional hitman. Yeah, I no, wrestle I'm bears. A, yeah, I wrestle bears in my spare time. But, like, I'm just like, oh, fuck, these awkward conversations. I'm like, what do you do for a Isn't job? Isn't that I'm, weird? I'm like, I'm a musician. Oh, does that pay well? I'm like, fuck, I wish I didn't say musician. I wish I said a fucking plumber. Did you have Did you have that when she was in primary school that you had to be friends with the parents of her I, uh, friends? Yeah, but I, 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 I speak to them and say hello and I'm relatively okay. Some are fucking yeah. loopy, I'm guessing. Um, It's just some people I just don't have the... Time for. Yeah, I just I just think <laughs> we're just not on the same level. Yeah. Like as far as like they're living one type of life, I'm living another. It's it's like, hey, how you been? Hope you're well, kind of thing. Yeah. But you're not going to go into a fucking the fuck away from. Yeah, me. you're not going to go into a ten minute conversation about life because right. we're on different paths. But say they come in to get tattooed or something, we're going to have a yarn. You yeah. know, like yeah, that's yeah, sweet. Yeah. But it's like stuff like that where you you if you've lived one type of life for so long, I've had to be a little bit more open minded minded with certain things and, and obviously not come across as a fucking dickhead but it's like yeah no nah, fucking you know work same old same old like I just never give people too much because mm-hmm. I'm like oh how's life like it's the same shit you work I work fucking kids are good one day dickheads the next yeah. like it's the same vibe like yeah. we're all we're all battling and it's like some like some of the kids like one of them's Dad's like a fiery, comes and gets tattooed, shit like that. That's cool. Nice bloke, yeah. fucking. It's always something yeah, going on. Good, good yarn, like thing. One of Kennedy's friends' mum's a prison officer. Sick. Takes the piss, like yeah. fucking any of your mates in the jail I'm in, like yeah. joking around, like stuff like that. Tells me if it's a bit chaos there. <laughs> yeah, just shit like that. And it's like, <laughs> so like I do like chat with a lot of them and stuff. I'm very like fucking helpful when it comes to if like Kennedy needs to be looked after or something as well and and vice versa I, I have the kids and if Kennedy wants to bring a friend somewhere I'd rather take a friend along and go to fucking Outback Splash or Adventure World or bowling or fucking whatever go-karts do all this cool shit mm. then be able to do it as well because otherwise Kennedy has more fun if her friends are there as well like if you involve your friends mm-hmm. I remember when I was a kid you go surfing with your dad well you want your mates there as well Yeah, and it's the same like when we go motocross riding and shit so nowadays it's like well if her friends want to come Happy to pay for them all and if they have a bit of fun and memories and stuff like that. Cause, and I had one of her friends say the other week that I'm a, a cool dad. She, yeah. she was like, oh, you're, out of all the dads, you're the coolest dad. Oh, sick. And I was like, success. <laughs> I was like, Kiki, did you hear that? Like, Fuck ap- yeah. appreciate me a little <laughs> bit more. But like hearing cool shit like that is like very rewarding as mm. far as like, Obviously, they can see I'm, I'm, I'll make effort for the other, other dads her just and in the friends. Are, they're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, like, they're now the other dads are like stoked that they're not getting annoyed by her and all their friends. <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah. but like, I think that they're, they're a good bunch of kids, a good bunch of fucking girls. Mm. They're all um, very respectful and nice. So it's, and that, that's the one thing that's been hard for me is to try and like also create a daughter that understands it's good to be respectful and polite. and things because sometimes that's most important bro sometimes she can be a an, little girl an only child and a little girl yes. and not realize that she should have said thank you and but like comes out gets her nails done she's like thanks dad mm-hmm. oh uh, thanks for new shoes thanks you know like everything that came ready for school um and as time's gone on i feel like she's learning a lot more because i feel like we we're in a bit of chaos there for a while where we we're just fucking like uh, I, I wasn't trying to correct her on certain things because I was I didn't feel she was I don't know I just I just felt like I was running at a million miles an hour she was running a million miles an hour and we didn't take enough time to appreciate say thank you say this say that mm-hmm. and take a little bit of take life for granted a little bit yeah. too much and then you get into a routine yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah and as of late I'm like no nah, thank you thanks Kiki can you do this for me mm. You want this? You got to help me clean the garage. Like you got to wake up, chipping in, you know. And yeah. she's fine with it, which yeah. is good. Sweet, it's great. Yeah. crafter. This has been fucking awesome, bro. Thanks, mate. We'll knock so it on the head dope. now, eh? Yeah, done. Um, when are you going to start the drive, um, like setup 
for the motorcycle thing? Um, I'm, the fly is getting made now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to chat to a mate next week about a start point. Yep. And then just work out an end point. Probably go this time south of river to north. And I might try and either find a pub somewhere to finish it mm-hmm. or a warehouse or a fucking car park or something. Sick. I even thought about talking to Junlop Council because I went into one of their um, youth homeless um, organisations the other day to talk about it. And I figure if I can get the council on board, mm-hmm. I can use their car parks pretty easily Sick. and then just finish it there, get them out there, do a bit of a saucy sizzle. I'll, p- I'll put the cash up. Yeah, saucy right. sizzle, tell people of the are the homeless or struggling within the area if they want to come down and have a fucking feed I'll happily pay for it so. I, I know um, Black Platinum's the um, the car meetup crew they, yeah. they normally have um, the Lee collection which is like supercars yeah. and all that yeah. drive around with them so yeah. maybe I'll link you guys up yeah that'd be sick because you know what like I think if you can bring cool bikes cool cars like obviously if those cool cars followed a fucking pack of bikes mm. from south to north all the way down the freeway it eyes. gets some eyes onto it oh, and people yeah. be fucking stoked yeah. like and that's the thing you is when like you 50 supercars yeah if you finish and there's fucking cars and bikes mm-hmm, everywhere people yeah. want to come down you know yeah. and then they bring people down why can't they bring a fucking sleeping bag as well you know like just something like that so yeah. start that um yeah i've already put the wheels in motion for that and yeah just hopefully hopefully fucking get a lot of people out create a lot of awareness and donate a whole bunch of stuff to some people that will, that are in need and need the help you know sick bro yeah, i thanks. love it all right man well, can we do this again yeah fuck yeah fuck See yeah you. no worries yeah, ladies and you. gentlemen this has been the road show i hope you've enjoyed this one i'll talk to you soon thank bye. you bye. Bye. take me home i wanna know if you